where it can be like, just finishing up practice here and it's okay. Exactly. Yes, let's go. Oh, that sounds great. Thank you so much. Hey guys. Oh, over here. Sorry. Toss to a commercial. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Hey guys. We've been up here watching practice and everyone's getting super warmed up, or I guess maybe they're kind of already on fire, watching Raibu Kariyama, and he is just the best style. Can I, I'm so sorry, I messed that up so bad. I'm sorry, I went way too long. Thank you. There's so much more to snowboarding than just competition. Street snowboarding is just a small part of snowboarding and it's still such a big part of snowboarding. It's a lifestyle. Spending hours with a crew of your friends working together to create something amazing. That's what I find the most rewarding. Doesn't seem like we're gonna make it out alive. This is what we wanted to win. Get some, copper. The contest kids get a lot of spotlight, but it's great to bolster the street kids and put them on a platform like Dew Tour. 
It just gives people who don't have the exposure the opportunity to like be in front of like an audience. Style course. It has all different genres, and that's what makes Dew Toy great. This is the run we've been waiting to see. We've been riding the half pipe for a long time, and we've seen progression taking this explosion to the next level. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, triple four. That was huge. People like that danger factor. It's just what drives people to watch sports. It's nuts. Let's go! Welcome to Copper Mountain 2023. This is the Dew Tour, and today we've got a really special event for you. We have the men's super pipe final, but yesterday the women's super pipe final lit it up here, and we saw a changing of the guard. Todd Richards alongside Chris Grenier here for the call today. Yesterday, the women absolutely set this pipe on fire. Yeah, heavy day, lots of progression for the women out there. Looking to be another legendary day today. The competition is absolutely stacked. And we had a rail jam last night. We saw the women take the street street score a uh, street course, and also the skiers as well. So it's been a full day. But we are looking at today's rundown. We have the men's super pipe final, and then we're gonna go into this crazy jam, the Big Air Best Tricks Super Pipe Jam presented by Air Force. That is gonna be nuts. It's gonna be all about the biggest tricks you can possibly throw down. And we're gonna be handing out some prizes for that. And then tonight, we also have the women's ski street style. And we have also the men's street style that will cap off due to our 2023 here from Copper. Man, that's a lot. We've had a lot going on packed into two days, huh? Yeah, day two should be a legendary contest, both half pipe, street style. Uh, we got some heavy hitters yeah. in here today. We got Ayumu, Hirano, Danny Davis, Raibu. Uh, it's looking to be an incredible half pipe contest today, so I can't wait to see. The pipe is pristine. It let is me pristine. Tell you. I mean, what, what we saw last year, just over the years, Dutour has always been kind of about progression, and this being like a non Olympic qualifying year, it's kind of riders can kind of relax a little bit. Last year, we saw the, the tension about making the team. Raibu throwing the very, uh, excuse me, Ayuma throwing the very first triple ever in competition happened here. Are we going to see that today? We'll have to wait and see. But, you know, the talent that's here, Taylor Gold, maybe we'll get his, his final, uh, you know, finally get his moment in the sun. He's been ripping so hard. But yesterday, watching the women's snowboard pipe and seeing the real change of the guard. We've been talking about Chloe for years, and she just had a stranglehold on the podium. That is about to change. And, I mean, it was like just from beginning to end, but the real star, you know, yesterday was like the 11-year-old Patty coming out here and absolutely crushing 11 years old and putting on a show that would make a lot of pros just start weeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my favorite part of Patty yesterday when she got done a run, she said, it's just so easy. It's just too easy for her. Yeah. And imagine the run she's about to go on, 11 years old, dropping in, getting second place yesterday, and then going on to destroy the rail contest at night. It's just such a legendary day for progression of women's snowboarding. And you know what I love to see is like the style. The tricks are big, but the style's getting refined. Yeah, and that's that is that's the best thing about it is there's it doesn't look like they're struggling with these tricks. And we're talking switch backside 900s for an opener, you know, and then comboing that all the way down the pipe. We had even 1080s in the final yesterday. And you know, when I first looked at the roster, there wasn't a lot of people here because there's another contest that's kind of going on on the other side of the planet. But man, oh man, did it deliver. We had some of the best riding we've seen, some real progression. I was super excited at the end of it. I was just so stoked to see like, well, there's the future. Absolutely. And today, 
We got the men's super pipe final. It's going to be absolutely electric. Let me tell you, I just watched practice and they are going humongous. Uh, the pipe is prime and it should be a great show. Uh, one thing to note is, you know, we got Ayumu Hirano dropping seventh and then we got Taylor Gold dropping last. So mm-hmm. kind of underdog possibly uh, coming in to you know, claim the top of the podium. Yeah, there is the rundown right there. As you said, Taylor Gold, Colorado boy coming out of Steamboat Springs, hometown turf advantage? I don't know. And also Danny Davis, you know, Danny's been in this game for so darn long and he's the one that's really been pushing this whole, you know, style over spins and and making sure that it looks good if you're doing it like you're supposed to be doing it. Danny's also been riding half pipe since the Great Depression. Yes, God, he has so been. It's been a long time. But yeah, th- we're talking about a 22 foot monster. Back in the day, Todd, you, what did you write? Is it 16 feet, 18 feet? Yeah, I think that when I stopped competing, the pipes were 18 feet max. And you just, you know, it's amazing how much just adding that little bit more height on the wall makes for a truly intimidating experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is scary the amount of speed that you carry. So it's 22 feet tall, 550 feet long, 72 feet lip to lip. It's kind of a masterpiece, yeah. these guys in the snowcats that build these parks. It's, it's a real, real masterpiece what they're able to construct. And with, you know, we're talking about just adding those couple more feet from the wall, jumping from 18 to 22, that's where we saw the huge jump in airtime. And with that airtime came the more rotations, the more flips, more height. Let's check it out right now. If we look at, you know, we're going to look back and see about the progression, how we got there, you know, the evolution of pipe and where we're going and where we're at right now. Half pipes have changed a lot in the last 20 years. I remember when I was quite a bit younger and double corks kind of came onto the scene and that was a really big part of half pipe riding, kind of taking this explosion to the next level. That's what I love about snowboarding right now. It just keeps progressing. I definitely think going big is the most fun thing that you can do in a half pipe. To think where we are right now in terms of what is possible, it is insane. And I think that's why the half pipe is such a rad venue. To get on the podium right now is probably the hardest it's ever been. When you're seeing these tricks, they're gonna be different because the sport, it did a quantum leap. When I look at the pipe today and I think of where it came from to where it is now, the thing that doesn't change is whoever is going the biggest is the winner. Yeah, things have changed a little bit, Chris, since when I got done competing. And I mean, just looking like we were saying yesterday in the future of women's pipe riding and where it's going and just what these younger kids that are coming into it, what they're exposed to straight away, they're like, why shouldn't I be able to do a triple cork? He did it, so I should be able to do it too. And with great facilities here like Woodward, they provide these these safe opportunities for these kids to kind of work these tricks out. Mm -hmm. Learn them into an airbag, take them to the snow. Another thing they didn't really mention, you know, for the layman's, the the more transition on these 22 foot walls makes it safer because you're not, there's a bigger margin for error for landing flat. Right. So that makes it much easier to land on transition. Right. So they can do these big tricks. And with a 22 foot deep wall, that means theoretically you should be able to go at least 22 feet out of this thing. We have the Air Force height meter right there and I said it in that little piece, you can't argue with people going huge. If you're gonna do your tricks, you might as well do them gigantic. That's always a fan favorite of everyone out here at the half pipe. All right, well, before we get started here with this men's super pipe final, we're gonna throw it down to Mary Walsh with a little word from the sidelines. Hey guys, practice has been going off and already everyone's been throwing down. Raibu Katayama, so much style. And Ayumu Hurano, he did the triple last year, of course, and he just rides so well. He's been going huge. And then local favorite, Taylor Gold, his pipe run is just so unique and he's been going off this morning. So it's looking really good. Very excited. We're going to hit a commercial and then come right back and kick off the 2023 Dutour Men's Super Pipe Finals. <laughs> Face cow today. Get those boots laced. Let's go. I'm 
I've just never really done it, so it's really fun to get out here and experience something new. We should probably drink these fast. Two, two, two. Copper, kind of a big deal since 1972. Here's the 50 years of the best terrain for starting small and dreaming big. Here's to challenge and growth, memories and milestones. This is where athletes are made. The Athletes Mountain since 1972. Get after it. Sausage eggs on the croissant roll. Amazing. Nice and fluffy. The croissant. <laughs> I started my relationship with Mountain Dew when I was 16 or 17 years old. It was just Danny Davis at the time and I loved that small team vibe. They started off at such a high note with really giving back to the riders and they've kept it that way. Red's Backyard started and the whole point of it was I really wanted to give back and we're able to make that dream come true. Peace Park was something cool that we got to do every year. And once we did that, it was like, let's open it to the public so everybody can enjoy visions of terrain. We've all kind of like put the ideas out there and, yes. and we've gotten to execute them pretty well. I can't go after that. When did you start your relationship with Mountain Dew? Whew, man. Do they have that on there by chance? Yeah. What, yeah, what year was it? 2008. Holy smokes. Yeah, okay, cool. I knew nothing when I got into snowboarding. All I knew is that it was fun. Fun for me is riding with my friends and traveling around the world with those guys. Podiums are like there as a memory. Video parts you can always look back on. The one thing that I always say with Dew that's, again, just so rad is how long they've been dedicated to snowboarding and action sports. Mountain Dew really has made me become a better human and I feel so lucky that they've looked at me and took a chance with me. They have helped put snowboarding where it is. It's a good family to be a part of. Watch out, folks! <laughs> It all comes down to the number one qualifier in the competition coming in, Ayumu Hirano out of Japan. There are so many amazing snowboarders that have changed the game in the pipe, but one that stands out for me is Ayumu Hirano. He is a two-time silver medalist in the half-pipe, finishing in second place to Sean White and Pyong Chang. He's about to go absolutely buck wild on this half-pipe. Will we see that crazy triple out of him? We're watching the Japanese out there compete, and they're at the forefront of pushing where this sport is going. Here's his opportunity now to win the Dew Tour. Here he comes. Ayumu, I can't wait to see what he brings. There he goes! There he goes, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> oh! oh my word! That's the triple. That's what we've been talking about this whole time. Ayumo Hirano just changed the competition landscape for half-pipe snowboarding.
All right, and there he is, Ayuma Hirano, our gold medalist from Beijing. And, you know, last year at this Dew Tour, he did debut that trick. The first time it was done in competition, he didn't put, a, get, put together a run, but he definitely changed what was going to happen. And here's uh, Ayumu in practice. Grendis, you went out there and you kind of did some follow cams with these guys too. Talk about how casual Ayumu looks when he rides a pipe. Yeah, he looks like he just got out of bed, uh, hasn't even had his coffee yet. He's maybe still asleep because he's just so casual. One thing that's very impressive is he lands at the top of the transition, which you'll see he's able to carry his speed and just, he makes it look easy, yeah. hands in the pockets. That's what we like to see as fans of snowboarding taught him. Yeah, there's, it's just so much style oozing out of him. And, you know, he has this really uncanny ability, along with Raibu Katayama, to go absolutely massive where people are struggling. It doesn't even look like he's trying. He doesn't even pump, and then all of a sudden he's just shot out of a cannon, yeah. you know, 30 feet out. And I mean, when you ride a super pipe, 22 foot deep super pipe, I was talking to some friends of mine just yesterday, just kind of how about like, you know, I dedicated my life and competed for years riding pipe, you know, and I get in a 22 foot deep super pipe and I have, everything has to be sharp or else I'm going to get played, you know, and then to talk about these guys doing triple corks and people, you know, he's not the only one that has a triple cork at this point. I mean... Whether or not that's good as far as like, you know, what, what that means in progression, but it's like, it's just the next step, you know? Absolutely. And the tricks are so big and they're so dangerous and they make them look easy. Yeah. But you can't deny the fact that there's gigantic risk associated with all of this stuff. Like, if you or I were to try a triple cork, I would basically break in half on yeah. the coping and end up I, I basically see you. Dead. Guaranteed I see you for <laughs> me. But you know, you talk about like with the progression of this and like just in in terms of how big you can go. I mean, when Sean White started to really hit his stride in half pipe, it was he kind of paved the way for not being scared to carry as much speed as you possibly can. I mean, look at this right here. This is back in 2011, a nice over 23 foot high backside air to start off his runs. It was crazy. And then it just became stock standard for Sean to put all of his faith into that heel edge, carry as much speed as he possibly could, and just send. But, you know, Ayumu, the Japanese riders, they, you know, set their focus strictly on Sean White and said, he can do it. Why can't we do it? And all of a sudden, those guys are going just as big on frontside 1440s. I mean, to do a triple cork, you've got to be going 15, at least 15 feet out to get that rotation around. So, yeah, it's really special to see Ayumu kind of picking up where Sean White left off. You know, Sean really did a lot for this sport as far as bringing mainstream audience and, and just dominating everything. We love people that just dominate. Uh, and then it seems like, you know, now we have our Ayumus and we have Scotty James and, and Super Pipe is in a really, really great place right now with big tricks and good style. That's right. And all we need to do now is get some smaller half pipes at resorts so the average human can get in there and figure out what it's like to ride a half pipe. Speaking of absolute legends of style, there is Danny Davis. He has been in this game for a long time and he's going to talk to us a little bit about the progression that he's seen in his run to the top. A lot of good riders started to come into the half pipe. Ayumu, Sean was at a high level and kept just getting better. Scotty James came onto the scene. The riders got better. And, um, and I uh, do the best I can to keep up with it, you know. But uh, the riding got, got more technical. The spins got more. It's not rare you see a 1260 in the half pipe in a run now. When I was, you know, 2010, 2011, 2012, those contests, you weren't seeing a 12 hardly ever. I don't think um, double corks were just kind of fresh on the scene. Now we're even looking at like triple corks in the half pipe. So it's snowboarding's come a long way. The progression has definitely played a role in that. And it is the showcase for regret for progression. But one thing you can't argue with Danny Davis. I mean, he had a victory at X Games not that long ago. That was he did it his own way. You know, he put together a run that was. Some really difficult tricks. They didn't have the crazy rotations, but just the way they looked together in a chain kind of changed the game as far as what people thought was cool. And I mean, from being like a style purist, like I love watching smooth half pipe riding. Danny's like one of the greatest of all time at it. Yeah, his grabs are unbelievable. His board control, 
his style. I know we sound like we're beating a dead horse, but it's so cool to see these tricks that are so technical, and they just look good. They make him look good, and that's why we love watching Danny out here. And little sidebar, Danny, first time uh, competing as a dad. So wow. Major shout-out to Danny Davis. Uh, a little there. added pressure. Bring home some bacon for some diapers. Well, it's that diaper money. Copper Mountain has been at the forefront of the snowboard progression from back in the early 90s when everyone was hitting the stump of manhood up there off of the flyer to now where we see 22 foot deep perfectly groomed super pipes we have the woodward park coppers looking at 50 years of history here in colorado let's take a deeper look copper is king right now they take the time to make a rad park a great pipe they're one of the few resorts that provides a 22 foot half pipe year round for us to train in compete in i mean without them we'd be struggling to find half pipes. You see tons of pros coming through here all the time, since it really is just the athlete's mountain. It's just so cool. They build stuff for the elite pros, and then geezers like myself. It's crazy that Copper is on their 50th year. I feel so lucky every day that I get to come to one of the best parks in the world. Copper Mountain is leading the charge on progressive half pipe and park riding. There's no one else that even compares. The US team partnering up with Copper Mountain is huge. Some of the camps they set up for us, that's what wins medals. Woodward's amazing. It's a good place to come train and shred. The barn is just such an incredible place for a young kid coming up. Whether due tours here or regular year, it's the best resort to be at. <laughs> We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Imagine how much Mountain Dew is in there. We should probably drink these fast. Hey, it's me, food. I'm so much more than just what we eat. I'm hand cut, fresh and frosted. I love it. Aw, I love you too. See, life is always something new. All it. messy, frantic and amazing. And from where I sit, you look delicious. That's why every day is worth celebrating. If you can. Stay fresh. Sincerely, food. Sincerely, Safeway.
I started snowboarding when I was two with a lollipop in my hand. When I was five, I started my first real season in Japan. I love being outside. I love to surf. I love to skate. So when I snowboard, I get to meet these great people. I idolize Red Gerard and I see him a lot. So I try to copy him as much as possible. I can't believe that I'm in Duter now from just a little kid. I think I still have a lot to learn. This is my first ever chance in like a real adult competition. I want to snowboard forever. <laughs> Yo, I can't get over just Patty's like this little little girl, but man, when you just watch her ride a slopestyle course or a half pipe, her style is so beyond her years. There is Waibu Katsuyama, there is Danny Davis, and we're getting ready here to drop the first person in to this men's super pipe competition. Ayuma Hurano getting strapped in as well. So four runs here today, a different kind of a format. It gives them like a little one extra. Usually you, these guys are used to three runs best of three, so. It's still best of. It's however. still best of. But that leaves a lot of room for progression. If you got, you know, you got eight athletes, four runs, best run counts, uh, score out of a possible 100, and then again, the scoring from the judges is overall impression. Now, one thing that's exciting, we got 14-year-old Alessandro Bobieri, uh, and he will be, I guess, pre-running the course. Yeah, and then, you know what, that, the pre-runner is basically kind of helps the judges to set the scoring before the event starts, just so we have a scale to work off of. Usually, if you're the first rider to come down, Jason Woolley would be the first actual competitor to come down. Most of the time, the first rider, scores are still getting worked out, and the scores will progressively climb. It's just the nature of the beast of a judged event. you got to find your bar. you got to find the bar to be set. Absolutely. Now, one person I saw at the top of the course, you can see him right there, Danny Cass, Olympic bronze medalist, uh, coach of the U.S. team, up there filming with an iPod, giving advice to all these ripping snowboarders. I mean, if you're going to take, if you're going to have someone be your coach and take advice from somebody, it might as well be Danny. I mean, he's seen every different aspect of it from, like, basically changing the entire style of a generation to putting together back-to-back -back rotations over 900. I mean, that was, like, Danny brought that whole thing and making it look good at the same time. So this will be our forerunner to come down through the pipe. He's going to get this started. All right, Alessandro Barbieri. He's the forerunner, only 14 years old. He's watching him ride practice. He's been destroying the half pipe. Yeah, and this is the, this is the next generation of kids. These are the ones that are going to be holding the torch for the years to come. Here we go, getting hyped up. He was dropping in switch backside in practice, Todd. Let's see what he starts off with here. All right, here we go, rolling in to get things going. 180 in to a switch backside rotation. Switch back, wow, switch back 1080 to start off this run. Straight into a backside 900. Are you sure this is a forwarder? Yep. Straight into a front 10. This kid has got a litany of tricks at 14 years old. This is the future. Perfect full run to come down. He's got to be happy with that one. Now the judges have something to work on, and a lot of the riders up there are now embarrassed. You know what I say? <laughs> Why? That's not a full runner. Put him in the yeah. event. Put this put, kid put in, him in the, the contest. Event, what are we doing here? Are you kidding me? Let's take a bow down there, and let's take a look at some replays. <laughs> I mean, look at it. Switch back 10 to start off your run. A little bit of a hip whip in. trick. Yeah, I mean, for your first hit. That was insane. Ready right to do a backside 900. No sketches. Perfect pump across the flat bottom, carrying tons of speed. His coach, Danny Cass, likes that front 10 tail. Wow, that was an amazing run to start this off. Finishing things off with a nice front nine. Jeez. Got the doubles in there. He's got a switch back 10. 14 years old. I don't know how we make this happen, Todd. I say they throw him in the contest. Yeah, make just, it nine. Let's just throw this kid in there. Yeah, what did you give that, Todd? Maybe an 80, yeah, 85? 85, man. Jeez. We're not judges, but uh, yeah, these guys got their work cut out for them yeah, today, I'll tell you that much. We're grudges. Yeah, we're grudges. <laughs> we're we're uh, offering unsolicited advice That's at right. all times. 
Wow, that was insane. All right, here we go. Men's Superpipe Snowboard Final. All right, we're going to kick this thing off. We got Jason Woolley, Sid Ula, Josh Bowman, Ryan Wackendorfer, Raibu Katayama, Danny Davis, Ayumu Hirano, and we're going to wrap it up with Taylor Gold dropping last. So we got a stacked roster today, Todd. All right, here we go. All right, Jason Woolley coming from Winter Park, Colorado. Go, Goofy right footer. He's 23 years of age. Local Colorado boy. Make some noise for your boy dropping in Goofy foot. Here we go. Okay, heading into the front side hit first. Carrying a lot of speed. We lost a little bit of the sunshine today, so we've got some flat light conditions going on. That's what those big blue colorful lines are to give these guys a bit of definition on the walls. Nice smooth style. Big Michael Chuck, the off-axis backside 540 with the indie grab. Double hands on the nose. Tripler double nose grab right there. He had some big amplitude on that run. Looks like his highest air was 14.3 feet out. He got five hits on that run, averaging 11 feet 7 inches from that Air Force, U.S. Air Force height meter. Right and remember, there. the top finishers from this are going to move on <laughs> to the Big Air Best Trick Super Pipe Jam presented by Air Force later on. That will, you know, we'll have some more half pipe jam action. We're going to have the skiers and the snowboarders in there simultaneously. But check this out here. You can see the view from above and how far down the wall he travels on all of his hits. Not only is he going up 14 feet, but he's also traveling about 30 feet down the pipe on all of those takeoffs. Look at this, the off axis Michael Chuck. I love the front side. Crippler 5, double nose. All hands on deck. See how the judges score this run number one. 53 for run one of four. He's got three more to go to improve, but solid showing for run number one. All right, so dropping second, we got Sid Ula, currently living in Venice Beach, California. Only 16 years old. He's goofy footed, originally from Great Britain. Loving the long lettuce flown out of the helmet. Oh, he's got right a there. lot of lettuce. You know, the lettuce is flowing. There's some hair farming going on. ribu has got a fresh perm yep. for this event. Yeah, a lot of hairstyle styling going on for yeah. these things. He's locking in, getting ready to drop for run one of four. Here we go. Either he's visualizing his run here as he drops in. One more crank down on the back binding. As much speed as he possibly can into the first hit. Big backside air to get the momentum going on this run. Straight into front side 900, upside down. Combos that into the backside five. Judges want you to link tricks together. They want you to go huge out of the pipe and put together technical combos. The more technical your combos are, combined with your height out of the wall will give you those big scores. A little alley-oop there to end off that run for Sid. Sid looking to improve. He's got run uh, one of four in the books. Coming from Venice Beach, California. Only 16 years of age. That's got to be nerve-wracking to be up there at 16, drop it into a 22-foot super pipe. I know, especially when everyone up at the top's got iPads. That's when everyone's exactly. all serious. All the yep. coaches now have iPads up top. Yeah, if you're up there, I don't think you're allowed on the deck without an iPad, I think, Todd. Part of it is basically your credential. Comes in switch with that switch front side 720. And then finishes it off with that backside alley-oop. Nice little poke on there. <laughs> Judges are going to give that a 44 flat, Scott. Todd. Scott, Todd, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Who cares? Gary, who am I talking to? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Jim. All right, Josh Bowman, 24 years old, coming out of Mammoth Lakes, California. I was watching him in practice. He was going large. I mean, it's it, that's you can't argue with people going massive. 
That's one thing we like to see, Todd, is big air. I think it's the scariest of all the tricks because you have to put all your confidence into the, your body's ability to hold that heel edge when all this half pipe wall wants to do is squish you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now he's regular footed, dropping in switch backside. Air. Yeah, switch backside. Back switch backside air, huge. Kind of a body jar there, smashing his tail in. Combos that into the double 1080. But man, start things off with a big switch backside error, and you can tip your hat to Danny Davis for that, making that be a staple of half pipe runs. Well, to the untrained eye, the switch method is one of the most difficult tricks possible on a snowboard. Holding your heel edge going backwards across that flat bottom is no joke. So we love big switch methods. Uh, you know, that run is looking really promising, Todd. Yeah, he's just got to put it together a little bit more, as we see here. Switch backsider stuff. Watch the contact he comes in. You see that little puff of snow come up, and then straight into the double, up and over twice. So, you do double backflips off jumps. You've been known to throw a double back. I have. Yes. What do you look at in the middle of your double rotation? You look early, and then you look again. But in the middle of your rotation, you're just... Blacked looking out. up at the sky, All really. Right, great. So we got, uh, uh, speaking of double flips, Ryan Wackendorfer's got a beautiful double Michael Chuck. I don't know if we're going to see it today. Uh, but he's coming from Edwards, Colorado, riding regular foot. He's 27 years old. And he is no stranger to half-pipe annihilation. Um, great air awareness. Yeah, he's really smooth, too. Like, when you watch him go across the flat bottom, the way he carries his speed in between the walls, it's just so smooth. Pops a little 180 into the pipe, straight up into a perfect double. You see how tall he stands up when he lands, straight into a 1260. Look at that double right there. That's what you were talking about there, the double Michael Chuck. Talk about a committed move. As soon as you leave the lip and you lock into that grab, you better hope things are going the right way. Second 1260. Incredible run for Ryan. So perfect, so smooth in between the walls. Ryan just came out swinging, setting the bar right there. That was a that was a run that he doesn't even need to do this early, but he's coming out setting the bar high. <laughs> yeah, uh, well. That's going to be an obvious first place. Just, I'm not a judge. Just but. get it over with. Right there is the double. Gets that around, sets himself up here. Great amplitude, too. And then there's the front side 12, 8, 1260, rather, into the double Michael Chuck. What a combo right there. And you have to land so perfectly on that front 12 to be able to set up for that double Michael Chuck with the proper amount of speed. And there's the double 10, sets him up for the switch double 1260. What a heater of a run. Switch front side 12 to finish things off. And I love when riders use the entire half pipe. Look at that. He went to the pretty much last hit possible there. Sometimes you see people duck out early. I'm a yep. fan of when they use the whole pipe, Todd. I'm a fan of Ryan Wackendorfer. I feel like he hasn't really, you know, gotten his just deserves over the years. But boom, 87.66. One of the most technical riders in the pipe today. Yeah, that's going to put him in first place there, Todd. That's going to be a tough run to beat. So it's already heating up in this run one of four. Now coming out of Japan, we got Raibu. He's 27 years old, he's regular. He's known for going huge. And he also has a perm, Todd. That's right, he's about five foot five, five foot seven with the perm. Mm -hmm. And boy, does this guy go huge. He had a little Instagram clip the other day doing an air to fakie traveling about 30 feet blind down the pipe, about 15 feet out. Let's see if we get one here. Boom, starts it off right there. Straight into a slow rotated double 1080. Dripping the style on that front side nine. Combos that into the back side nine, just floating. Ribe is one of these riders who looks absolutely perfect. Whoa, that's a base plate smasher if I ever saw one. Landing super flat in the trough of the transition there, but Raibu, insane way to start off a run. Drifting, blind, air to fakie. He's doing got, it for the people, slapping the high fives too. He's got three more runs. Let's see that perm, Raibu. Lose that helmet. We want to see the perm. <laughs> yeah, I heard he goes to downtown Tokyo to get a perm. Now there's that air to fake. He just shot out of a wow. cannon. It's right. such a subtle move, but it's really hard to match transition on air to fakies like that, especially that high, in order to combo that into a double 10. And as you go bigger in this pipe, the, the margin for error gets much, much more. You have to be more precise. So this run, I think where it went wrong here is the front side 12. Watch how low he lands. Double tail grab. Boom! Smacks that 
bottom half of the transition, and that is just solid ice at that point. But we're gonna get a, a shot of the perm. Yeah, yeah let's get a got perm. Perm shot. Okay, dro yeah, dog, dropping that perm. The lettuce is flowing like the Look salmon of the that. Capistrano right there. That thing's beautiful. You paid for that thing, show it off. Yeah, a best drip award that I know, I think we're giving away a best drip. I think it could potentially go to Raibu just for the perm alone. Just hair drip. Yeah. I think so. I want to know guy? what kind of product he's using. Okay. Speaking of product, look at this guy. He's got a face perm. Yeah. Danny Davis. Midwest boy, 34 years old. He's been riding half pipe since before electricity was invented, actually. So Where does that put me? Yeah, well, you were churning butter, I think, okay. somewhere Thank around you. there. Thank yep. You. So, um, yeah, basically, just take note of the style. He's a gift to snowboarding. We love the way he makes it look. No pressure, Danny. You got a baby at home. Marge is waiting for you to bring home some bacon. Here we go. It's Danny Davis dropping into his first hit. Giant backside air to start off his run. He's riding a reissued Craig Kelly board. That's a 168, I believe. Um, yeah, he told me that the other day. Showed me that thing. There's a lot of nose. Nice switch backside air for Danny Davis. Switch 10. Front Miller flip. You just love to see that, Todd. The Miller flip at the end to wrap things up on a just cannon of a Burton snowboard right there. Look at that thing. He's got the tip is over here in copper, the tail's over there in Frisco. That thing is huge. He's hoping for about three feet of fresh to dump into the half pipe because he's got an unfair advantage with that thing if we get some right. fresh snow. He must be anticipating that backside wall to slide. Look at that backside air kicking that back leg well above his head. And then combos that straight into a beautiful frontside 900 tail grab. And then the Danny Davis signature switch method. Straight into this 1080. Squeaks that rotation around. Let me tell you something, Todd. He needs that diaper money. He does. He really does. Those things add up from what I hear. And then a Miller flip to cap it off. The people's champ out here. He really Danny is. D. He really is. Go up and say hi. Rub his beard. I don't know. He's a people person. Hey, Mary, you're down there with Danny Davis. Let's hear some words from this. Hey, guys. How's it going down here, Danny? First run down. You've always been a godfather of style, but now you are an actual father. <laughs> How is it uh, riding your first pipe run as a new dad? I feel a little daddish out there. Um, it's been... <laughs> It's been fun. Um, I'm seeing kids that are quite young in the half pipe and potentially going to be beating me today. So that feel, makes me feel a little extra daddy. But uh, it's fun. I'm, I, you know, I always have fun in here. So we're having a good time. I feel like that's so evident because you have just such style in the pipe and you always make sure to keep that infused regardless of the tech that you're bringing and everyone is kind of, you know, these huge tricks. But how do you keep style at the forefront of your riding? Well, try to have fun, tweak hard, you know, think of some tricks that maybe aren't happening at the time and being inspired by guys like Dan Cass, who's up at the top of the pipe. And, um, you know, I came up in a time when spins were just starting to come, spin to win was coming in tough. And so um, watching guys like Dan and Mason Aguirre and Kevin Pierce kind of led me down that path of style. And when you don't spin much, it's easier to have style. So. You don't want to see me checking frontside 12s in this thing, trust me. Well, we love it. The crowd loves it, and we're, uh, we're excited for your next three runs. Have fun out there. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Mayor. You know what Danny's always doing? I call them feel-good tricks. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that just feel good. Well, Danny Davis has got about as much nose on his board as Ayumu is tall. Exactly now. We are about to see someone absolutely go mental. We saw his practice runs, casual back-to-back -back 14s off the first two hits. Ayumu hands in the pocket. He's about to put on a show. Look at those swag bag pants he's wearing right now. He just looks cool when you look at him. There's nothing else you can say. He's got the dreads. He's got the calm, sleepy style. And he goes humongous. So this is going to be a treat to watch Ayumu run one of four getting the gloves dialed in. Some of these riders seem like they have nerves. Ayumu, I don't think he does. this cat. Another walk in the park. Here we go, Todd. 
Here we go, Ayuma Hirano dropping in. First hit, front 14, perfect. Yep, pivots that around. Lower part of the transition, but able to combo it into his second 14 and land so low, so low that his glove blew off. Yeah, that sounded flat and uh, hard pack right there. You know it's a hard impact when your glove flies off. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ones where sometimes you see the binding eject. One of those I love when you see a good old binding eject. But Ayumu gets another three runs to make it happen, and we saw him in practice just make it look real casual. So it's all about putting together just one. All you need is one. Here we go, Ayumu into that front 14. Maybe pulling out a little bit too far. Watch how down the wall he lands. He pivots that around on his nose. And then the second one here lands a little low in the trough as well and just can't hold on to it. I'll say that's a little out of character for Ayumu. I feel like he's known for landing at the top of the transition, carrying tons of speed. But again, he does have three more runs. And he does have a triple court. So uh, with Ryan Wackendorfer setting the bar so high, I wonder if we will need to see it today. Let's see what the judges score. Run one coming in at a 17-6-6. It would seem to me the triple would be a survival trick. You only do, it's a weekend, a weekend maneuver. You don't do that thing unless it's a contest. No one's doing triple corks for fun. And so our benchmark score here is an 87.66 with Ryan Wackendorfer, Danny Davis in second. And our final dropper of the men's super pipe final, run number one, is Taylor Gold coming from Steamboat Springs, Colorado, 29 years old, regular footer. And he's got some of my favorite Dude. tricks. His trick selection it's so good. is beautiful. He's been one of my favorites to watch for years now. And it's, you know, he has a couple combination runs that are so different than everybody else. Really stands out with the trick selection. Always dropping into this beautiful McTwist oh, Japan look at chicken that. wing. Kicking that back leg super high up, right into a huge front 12 with a pivot right under the lip, straight into the double. Michael Chuck, he can do a 1080 on that one. Oh my lord, Taylor Gold with a 10. Does he have enough wall? Oh, almost wow. ran out of half pipe, but that run was going insane. I did not expect that air to fakey to be so gigantic. Yeah, he had it all, and then the last and final hit, he just kind of didn't initiate quite right on that cab 10 or cab 9, whatever he was going for there, but what a great run. Check this out, this McTwist is so perfect. There's a bunch of different styles that people have to do McTwist, and that's like the most kind of proper upside down classic like Terrier McTwist where you get to hang it out to dry for a little bit. I personally love the double Michael Chuck, and yeah. I think he goes Mel into Indy. I couldn't tell from that angle, but a lot of times you'll see the grab Dude, change. And then the are you, That might. that's the highest air we've seen yet, and it's on an air to fakie. Somebody got a good photo of that. Let's see, maybe Mark Clavin's underneath there. Oh, but it'd probably not. be out of focus yeah, though, if he was. Clavin I mean. was taking a picture of a sandwich. He's got grease on his lens anyways. And then he tries to get the 1080 around, but just kind of runs out of wall. Let's see what the judges Taylor, score you got this. three more. It's like a re-rack them when you get back up to the top. Typical contest format. That was just a practice run for you, buddy. We know you got this. We know you got those combos. So we're going to head back up to the top of the order here with Jason Woolley from Winter Park, Colorado, 23 years old, goofy footer. Taylor Gold in fourth place, even with a solid fall at the bottom there. Yeah, if he puts it together, he's going to be a threat to the podium. So we got a lot more snowboarding to go. Goofy footer Jason Woolley dropping in for hit number one. Here he goes, carrying a lot of speed into his front side wall. Snapping into a big, slow 720 to set him up here for this double. Gets it around. That was really slowly rotated. Front nine, two hands on the tail. Double Michael Chuck, slow motion. And then here, really kicking out that upside down quickly with the lean grab. That was sick. All of those rotations were so slow. He is fired up. Jason Woolley putting down a heater of a run for run number two right there. Throwing in the double. Michael Chuck, I love that crippler lean air with the melon grab on that on the front Beautiful. side. Watch how nonchalant and slow motion these airs are. When he uncorks into these spins, there's so much time he has to watch where he's coming, standing tall in the bottom of the transition. There's the double chuck. And then watch this upside down lean 540 where he boots it out into a lean air full kicked out i'm a fan of through. this one todd 
Boom! <laughs> Inside the binding method. So sick. A lot of amplitude, carrying speed all the way down, slapping high fives for the fans. That was a good run number two for Jason Woolley. Man, that was a, some great combos. He's going to slide himself up into the top three mixture with that. Let's see. Let's take a look at this double Michael Chuck coming in. Looks like he's grabbing Indy on that one. And just able to open it up and then combo it. Look at this. Full snap into a method midway through that. That is such a good looking I trick. I think you would probably throw your back out if you tried to do that at this point in time. I'm going to throw my back out just strapping in, dude. It doesn't, it just, I don't have to be above the lip to hurt myself. That's a 72-3-3. Jason Woolley happy with that run. Puts him up into second place behind Ryan Wackendorf. All right, we got Sid Ula, 16 years old. He's a goofy footer. Currently living in Venice, California. But he splits his time living in Summit County since he was nine years old. So he can train in the half pipe at Copper for a longer period during the year. He is a Copper athlete. So this is a big contest for being 16 years old. This is this real deal. Heck yeah. He's locking in. He's got, I'm sure he's got lots of nerves. This is like being at the DMV for your driver's test times 10. Here we go, Sid, kind of visualizing his run right here. It's kind of a mom spaghetti, palms are sweaty moment right now. <laughs> Shout out Eminem. <laughs> Shout out 8 Mile. <laughs> here we go, Sid on his way in for the first hit. Dropping into hit number one. Big backside air to get things going. Trying to combo these tricks together. Front 10, not able to get that rotation around. So he's got two more runs. Nice lean air, full tweak out on that one. Coming down here into the bottom. So he, like I said, he's got two more runs. Front side 1080 kind of got away from him on the second hit. Hey, Mary, why don't you jump in there with Sid and see what he has to say about his day so far. Hi, how's it going, guys? I'm here with Siddhartha. So, okay, you just had your first run. Your hair is amazing, by the way. Um, can you take us through your uh, pre-run ritual up there? Well, I have a song that I listen to before every run, and so I kind of wait till it like builds up to the, to the beat drop, and then the moment it hits that point, that's when I'll... Drop in, point the nose. What song is it? It's Bullet with Butterfly Wings by Smashing Pumpkins. Whoa! Talk about some retro vibes coming back. Yeah, I mean, I love the song so much. I love the Smashing Pumpkins um, and having so much fun out here. That's so cool. And uh, we know also it's Black History Month, and you're committed to really being uh, a role model for individuals, BIPOC individuals wanting to get into action sports. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean... I really, especially during Black History Month, I'm really proud to represent my community, my heritage, and my culture. So um, I hope it inspires some people, and I just love it. Yes, we love that. And on yeah. a final note, not only is it your first due tier, but uh, heading to Stanford in the fall. No big deal. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I just did my school and stuff, but uh, having a lot of fun. Uh, good at snowboarding, very smart and humble as well. We'll have so much fun on your next three runs. Uh, Siddhartha, it was great to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you too. Let me tell you, Todd, yeah. we got to slap some respect on the Smashing Pumpkins yeah. right there. And sma slap some respect on going to Stanford. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I don't know, you know, sometimes you don't want to be too smart, you know, I always say great snowboarders <laughs> oh, yeah? have just the right amount of dumb, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't want to overthink it. <laughs> All right, Todd, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, yeah, I live it every day. Getting into run number two, we got Josh Bowman from Mammoth Lakes, California, 24 years old, regular foot. Switch backside for Drop his first hit here. Here we go. Initiate launch code. Oh, such a stylish switch backside to get things going straight into the double. That's where things went wrong last run. He cleaned that one up into the front side nine tail grab. You can see that front arm kind of tele the telegraphing what he's going to do, spinning the backside 900. Straight into a big front double and washes out on his heels. 
He was going large that run, Todd. You could hear the, che the crowd cheering for him. Yeah, let these guys know when they're putting down. They're doing it for you out here. Look at that switch backside air. Great extension. And using that to combo into the double 1080. Dipping his shoulder two times on that rotation. Full commitment as soon as you leave the lip on those tricks. And then into the front side nine tail grab. And you can see, watch as those arms kind of let you know what's about to come. When they counter spin like a counter turn like that, you know a big spin is coming up. And then look at this double right here, front side double 1080. But just lands a little bit on the heels. Yeah, he took that thing to the parking lot, Todd. That was large. So back to our first place competitor. He was sitting in first, Ryan Wackendorfer from Edwards, Colorado. Very stylish rider. He's got a deep bag of tricks and he's sitting in first place. So I don't even know how you improve upon that run, Todd. Just go bigger. wackendorfer has got that perfect double. His first run that came through here was insane. Here we go, a little 180 into the pipe. Doubles that around, lands high on the wall, carries tons of speed. Front side, 1260, a little bit of a jet ski through the flat bottom right there, but he doesn't go down but he's still gonna be sitting on that first run score. Just the compression of these walls. If you don't land perfectly, the bottom of that transition just wants to squish you like a grape. Yeah, he was going size large right out of the gate there. The front 180 in is kind of a Danny Cass inspired into that cab 1080 to start things off, double cork. And then this is where things went wrong. Went into that big old front side 1260 Watch double where he cork. Lands, and that's like the, the compression right there, you see him get the squat, just holding on to that heel edge. Yeah, and he actually didn't even land that low. So you know they're going big when they squat and they don't even land at the bottom of the transition. But All right, we're gonna head back up to the top. To one of my favorites, Raibu Katayama from Japan. Known for going humongous with incredible style. Oh yeah. Raibu always puts on a show every time you drop in with a big old smile on his face. Let's see if he can put down his run number two here, Todd. Here we go, Raibu dropping in for his first hit. Air fakey off the first hit this time, setting himself up here. Slow motion double, lands really tall in the transition. Front nine, perfect. Snaps into the backside, 900. Down here, oh, doubles it over, front 12, Rabu Katayama. That air to fakie to start that run off, that's what he wanted. And looking at that US Air Force height meter, his highest air was 16 foot four inches, which is one of the biggest airs we've seen today. Uh, and then that air to fakie, just so stylish and so dangerous, going backwards down the pipe. Let's take a look at Rabu's run. This was phenomenal, Todd. Yeah, check this out, this air to fakie is giant. And it's all about faith. As soon as you leave the lip on an air to fakie of that magnitude, you're just kind of hoping that you are you've got the right trajectory to make it back into the wall and able to combo that into that double 10 and landing that tall up on the wall. Yeah, and the thing with Raibu is he's maybe not huge on the spin to win factor. Whatever, but man. But his style and his amplitude are what win my heart over every time. And then straight. That's the key to my heart, Todd. Look at this double. 1260 tail grab. Yeah, I think this is going to come in as a pretty high score. Look at this. Ending it with a bang. You could hear the crowd going bonkers when he landed that one. Just so confident in his landing. The yeah, Iraibu. You know what's great is he puts on a show every time he straps in. Big old smile on his face. Perm underneath that helmet. Awaiting the score from these judges. That air to fake you off the first hit. I mean, that took a lot of risk. Hope they reward it. I don't want to have to go in that judge's booth and start. I don't have to throw in some it. Olympic baloney in yeah, there. Yeah, do, do a uh, reverse suplex. Uh, <laughs> judges don't get. So they're looking at it score. again here. This is why we're seeing the replays. Judges are taking a look at it again. There's that air to fake you. Absolutely massive. And just this combo alone, that first trick straight into the double 10 and the fact that he landed that so high on the wall, both of these tricks actually, 
to be able to combo out of that air to fakie cleanly with no sketches across the flat bottom into that double 10 and land high. Puts this kid in first with a 90. We got a new leader, new kid on the block, Raibu coming in with a 90. He's currently in first place. That bumps Ryan Wackendorfer into second. And uh, you know, the, the judges rewarded style and amplitude on that run. And I love to see it. Here we go, run nose. We got Danny Davis. Run number dose, coming from Michigan. Mountain Dew athlete, style extraordinaire, riding a 192 right now, Todd. There we go, he pulled that board right off the wall here at Copper, it was hanging above a bar last night, and he just decided he's gonna start riding that thing. Look at this, Dan Davis though, talk about style. Signature, oh! West Japan, that's what we wanted, that's what we came here for, Todd. There we go, Dan. <laughs> Looking good, setting himself up with a 720. Into that 1080. Dude, Dan Davis having a moment. Danny D making it look good. Yeah, let's hear it for this guy. On that 192 plank right there. Things an absolute missile, Todd. It's a missile. All right, Danny Davis dropping in. Straight out the box, big backside air. Kicking that back leg way out and beyond. Straight into that dip shoulder 900. He doesn't miss that one, Todd. No, no, that was clean. And then the Mickey right here, hanging that one upside down. Front Sev, he gets the 1080. He's just ticking boxes over here. Yeah, the cab 10, that's all day for Dan. Sometimes I wonder, I ask myself, how many McTwist Japans do you think Danny Davis has done in his life? You know, that's automatic for him at this point. I think he'll be able to do that till he's like 95 years old. 68 comes across for Danny Davis's second run through. Danny Davis, that's gonna keep him in fourth place with that 68. And we're gonna head back up to the top to Ayumu Hirano. One of the most incredible snowboarders we've ever seen. He uncorked the triple cork for the first time in competition here last year at the Dew Tour. And he's looking to put together a solid run for run number two. He's been looking incredible in practice. Okay, all eyes on the half pipe. Here all we right. go, Todd. Here we go. Ayuma Hirano had problems this first run with this combo. Let's see if he nails it this time. Front 14, stomp. Switch 14. Ah, landing a little bit low in the transition yet again. Ayumu, problems with the back-to-back -back 14s up top, but watching him in practice didn't even look like that was even causing a little bit of a problem. Yeah, he so. was putting those down, no problem in practice. That's out of character. The good thing is he's got two more. I'm Get sure that. he's not sweating it. Flat light's kind of creeping right now, and I wonder if that's kind of playing into the, you know, being able to see where you are and maybe pulling out a little bit too much. Here we go. Here's the first. Front side, 1440. Combos that into the switch version, switch 1440, and that's just where he lands a little bit too low in the trough of the transition. Yeah, just snapped it in a little too deep, a little too much pop on the takeoff, it just needs to come in a bit higher on the transition. If you watch Ayumi, one of the things that's so incredible is he rides in with his hands in his pockets, barely even winds up, mm -hmm. and then just explodes. So, second run coming in at 1766, same as first one. And our last rider of round two, we got Taylor Gold coming out of Steamboat Springs, Colorado. 29 years old, with some of the best trick selection in the game. A very unique half pipe run. Uh, had a great run, number one, up yeah. until the last hit. Just got snaked a little bit in the bottom half of his run, but let's see if he can put it together here. Here he goes, straight up into the big 540, McTwist in that style. Front 12, here we go, this is the double chuck. Lands that perfect, bolts into the pipe. Yes! Giant air to fakie, lands at the bottom. Oh, we need that run. That Come was... on, Taylor, give it to us. Yeah, we just got word that's the highest air at 18 foot, 18 foot eight inches is what it's coming in at as the highest air of the day. 
on the Air Force height meter. And that was on an air to fakie at the bottom of the run. There's that McTwist. Landing tall to the wall, then combos that into the front 12. Just watch how clean this landing is here. That last whip around of the rotation, straight into the double. That's That trick is so crazy. It's if so you dangerous. mess up on the initiation, oh my gosh. And you see that little wiggle right there? That's like he's holding on for dear life at that point. His body wants to fight it and go spaz in the air, and his his grab is like, I gotta hold this together. That, that air, air to fake, he's like brave heart mode. Mm -hmm. hold, 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 launch. All right, we got uh, Raibu is our new leader. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're at the top of the order. a big deal since 1972. Here's the 50 years of the best terrain for starting small and dreaming big. Here's to challenge and growth, memories and milestones. This is where athletes are made. The Athletes Mountain since 1972. Get after it. All right, we are back here at Copper Mountain for the men's super pipe final. Uh, we, we've got a little final going on right now. We've got Raibu Katayama sitting in first place. And we are learning that you need to be just the right amount of dumb to be a professional snowboard athlete. That's my theory, Todd. You don't overthink it. You want to go hollow head out there. That's right. So you got to be just the right amount of stupid. So uh, Stupidity is a superpower. You heard it here first at Dutour. Yes, exactly. So uh, also keep in mind that we have the Superpipe High Air and Best Trick Jam presented by U.S. Air Force, both men and women. Snowboard and ski in a little bit coming up after this event. But we still got... Uh, two more runs to go here at the Super Pipe Final here at the Dew Tour at Copper Mountain. And we got to stress, it only takes one run to go home with the win here. So pressure's kind of mounting for some of these guys that haven't been able to put together a full run down the half pipe. But like I said, to land one solid run. Comboing the doubles up top. Straight into the front side, 900. Trying to put a little bit more spice on this run. Whoa, opening up early on the double Michael Chuck into the layback. Wow. What an exciting run, Todd. Yes, that was exhilarating. That was electric. Jason Woolley coming from Winter Park, putting down a 
heater run. I love the double Michael Chuck there to end things off, keeping it exciting. I can't wait to see the replay of the double Michael Chuck because it kind of looked like he let go of his grab a little early and then was like, holy cow, I'm up here in the air still flipping. He goes into this beautiful cab 1080, latching onto that mute grab. Right into this front side. It's 900. Nice nine, and then right here. Watch as he opens up on the second half of this, like, whoa! Just like, you see those arms start flapping, that's when you're just trying to get that board back <laughs> underneath you. He it's really, like, zinged that thing off the top of the lip. Yeah, watch this. Yep. Oh, oh the reach. Oh, he's, he I, actually missed the grab. Uh, yeah, that's the, the fingertip. That happens to me a lot in hey, my old age. You're, but you know what, you though? You reach that, down and you go, no, nope, that's not happening. That was a win on a, on a double committed trick like that, and you miss the grab, and you walk away with all your teeth. Yeah. You count that one as a win. So it looks like that 73 is holding strong so far. He's in third place. We're going to head back up to the top of the half pipe for Siddhartha's third run here. Now, Siddhartha narrowly missed the Olympic team at age 15, representing Great Britain. And he's focused on making it next time around. He's half black, half South Asian. He's hoping to inspire other black snowboarders he's waiting for to that do their thing. Waiting for Smashing Pumpkins to drop right here. I appreciate that. You're not going until it's time for you to go. Mm -hmm. Got to let the beat build. I thought it was Eminem 8 Mile, but... Uh, Mom's spaghetti, palms are sweaty, <laughs> but I had it wrong. Todd, it's smashing pumpkins, which is slap more respect on that. Than Here we go. Gets that last click on his binding as he drops into this first backside air. Whoa, let's go a little bit early, but able to match the transition, not losing too much momentum. Front 10, a little bit of a hand drag, but it's not really slowing him down. There's that seven, keeping it under his feet here. A bit of a layback, trying to find his line again here. Backside 540. And that'll do it for him on run number three of four. Now you'll notice Siddhartha mixed it up on this run. Uh, he went, uh, he was going front nine second hit, and then he, he cooked it into a front 10 there. So let's take a look at this run here, Todd. Here's this backside air. Snaps off. Let's go a little bit early. That's when you know you're going huge, when you start to roll the windows down. You're trying to match that transition with your body. You go into full survival mode. There's that front side 1080, a little bit of a scrub on the heel edge. <laughs> Waiting on that score. 32 pops up for him for his third run. So he's got one more run left. Shout out to the Smashing Pumpkins. Ready, All right, we're heading into yeah! Josh Bowman's run from Mammoth Lakes, California, 24 years old, regular foot. Trying to get a score in the 90s. Bowman is sitting in sixth place, getting the crowd jacked up. He's been just going big in practice all day. He's got the amplitude, he's got the tricks. Let's see if Josh can put it down. Okay, here we go. Drop it in switch. That switch method, he's been making this look so good every run. Perfect extension on that, setting him up here. Big double. Combos that into a front side 900 tail grab. Into the back. Nah, it was supposed to be a back nine, turned into a backside 720. Ooh, looks like a Ooh, maybe a one cheek sneak. Yeah, that was a cheek sneaker right there. Yeah, never, never a fun one. Oof. When the butt cheeks hit the snow in that manner. That's right. Ouch! I hate that. <laughs> yeah, never a good feeling. Yeah, might need a new pair of underpants. After that. <laughs> this happens to me sometimes, Todd. Happened to me recently, actually. <laughs> so he started things off nice with a beautiful front side 900. Or that wasn't the beginning of the run, but front nine tail. This was, I thought this was going to be a back nine. Kind of saved it, turned into a back seven because he didn't have the rotation. And boom, ow. It just didn't get the initiation off of that. Oh, the immediate hand yeah. to the butt can just let everyone know. That that, that pain man. will reside in five five minutes or so. You should mm -hmm. be all right. All right, Ryan Wackendorfer sitting in second place right now. His first run was at 87.66. He has the tricks for first. He needs a 90.34. 
He has the tricks, he has the amplitude, he just got to put it all together. Ryan Wackendorfer from Edwards, Colorado. Just down I-70 here in Edwards. Yep. Here we go. Ryan dropping in for his third run. There's that little 180 in. Casual sets him up here. Nice double 10 to start the run. Straight into the double 12. Makes that look so effortless. Into the double Michael Chuck. Looking even stronger so far this run. Sets him up switch and he is out. He does not need that switch 12. He already nailed it on run number one. Nice run, Ryan. His tricks are automatic. He's just locked in out there, Todd. And see, he comes around and just lands so effortlessly in the flat bottom. Let's take a look at that run. He goes starting things off, getting it going with the switch 10 and then straight into the dub 12. Kind of letting go of that board a little bit early, but his body just knows where it needs to be to get back on that transition. Yeah, he's got an unbelievable air awareness. Yeah, and then, you know, the, the double chuck is just the craziest commitment move. So it looks like his first run is going to be the, the high score with that 87.66. This run three came in at a 61. So he's still currently sitting in second place. But again, Ayumu and Taylor Gold both haven't put down a run yet. Yeah, but we got Raibu here who's currently sitting in the lead with a 90 flat. What's he going to do? He's going to put on a show, Todd, because that's what he does. All right. Raibu about to go humongous on hit number one. Come here, on, Raibu. Here's the Dukor. Drifting air to fakie once again. Straight into that slow motion double. Perfectly angles himself into the wall. Lean 900. A little bit harsh on the heels. This is going to be a glory hit right here. For the love of the game. Nice big stale fish for Raibu Katsuyama. It's so good to see Raibu uh, back on top of the podium. He's had he's battled some injuries. He's had a, a long road to he got recovery. smoked here a couple of years ago. Made some contact with the deck that did not look very nice. But look at this air to Fakey drifting so far down. That was so huge to be able to like find where you are and put it down smoothly. And then just keeping that amplitude the whole way down. Look at that Big stale. old stale fish. You know that Clavin missed that photo, but yeah, I'm pretty sure absolutely. Yoshida might have at least got it. I heard, found on Yosh. I heard Yosh is moonlighting as a uh, Uber Eats delivery. He is. Yeah. yeah, have you seen that mustache? That yeah. thing's unbelievable. Yeah. All right, Raibu still in first place with a 90 flat. Raibu is the man to beat today. We're going to head back yep. up to the... 34-year-old vet, Danny Davis, from Michigan. Let's stand there at the top of that course, giving some unsolicited advice. Mm -hmm. As always. Yeah. Danny always making it look good. Signature McTwist. Looking to earn some diaper money today, dropping into that first hit. Dan Davis, only one position off the podium right now. Big backside air. If he can put this run together, we could see him into the money. Big front nine. Perfect pivot around on the end of that trick into the McTwist. Slap and plank. Gets the Indy to fakie. Into the switch Michael Chuck. Into a nice Indy oop. Very nice run, Danny. Putting some different tricks in there. Adding a little spice on there. Maybe a little tahine on the rim. I don't know. Yeah, that was some picante pepper right there, mixing things up with the trick selection. I love when they don't you don't see the same run every time. Danny's got a deep bag of tricks, so he's always mixing it up. I think Danny's going for full blackout style. He doesn't know what's going to happen between the walls. Yeah, he kind of just gets to the lip and just decides what he's going to do once he gets there. I like that plan. Also, you'll notice he's running the helmet out on this one. Uh, he had it tucked in. A lot of people have really good paint jobs on their helmet. His looks like uh, maybe a kid that was <laughs> two years old painted that. So. There's that indie air to fakie. Now watch this next trick. This is the switch Michael Chuck to fakie. Essentially a switch backflip to fakie. Drifting down the pipe. 
backside alley oop to end things off. Nice trick selection, Dan. You're just keeping us guessing out here. Let's hear it for Danny Davis. His wife is mad at him because he's not at home changing diapers. So he's going to need all the support he can get. All right, we're going to head back up to the top to Ayumu Hirano, who is yet to put down a run coming from Japan. He always is a contender for first place no matter what half pipe contest he enters. I want to see him lock in this combo up top because I don't know what he's going to do after that. Absolutely, yeah. Fully selfish right now. I just, just can you just land this so we can get the reg, the rest of the run going? Yeah, do this for the people. Bombs over Swag Dad, drop it in right here. <laughs> Look at the grip. Look at the style. Effortless. Here we go. Let's get this combo. Front 14. Perfect this time. Get it, Raibu. Giant switch 14. Here we go. Raibu with the Soul Arch Slob 540. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Front 12. Ayumu just put it down. Asleep at the wheel. Ayumu took a tranquilizer dart directly to the neck before dropping in. He actually was not awake for that run. Check, please. Yeah, that's going to be a first place contender run. Highest air 16.4. And averaging 14 feet out the entire way down, which is just great amplitude. We love to see it. <laughs> now watch, pay attention to how clean he lands these 14s. Front side 14.40 on the first hit. Clutched the entire way around. That little pivot to set him up fakey into this one. The switch 14.40 lands immaculately on that one. Now watch this right here. Well, actually, we're going to take another look at the 1440s. It's the combo. Into the second one. This is where he had problems in both of his previous runs. Nails it this time. And then down here, back nine. Just opens up, spots the landing, and then straight into this front side grab, upside down. Unbelievable. You know, I always felt like Danny Cass was known for that sleepy style, and Ayumu is the new throne of sleepy style. Uh, it just makes it look too easy. We love when they make the difficult tricks look easy. Tom. And it, Yeah, I called him Raibu in the middle of the run. That was Ayumu, excuse me, if you guys are confused out here. Ayumu Hirano absolutely oh. slaying with a 93. We got a new leader. At 93 flat, Ayumu up in first place, and he hasn't even unveiled the triple cork. He's got that in his back pocket. So we're going to head back to the last dropper of heat number one. But our top three standings right now, we got Ayumu, Raibu, and Ryan Wackendorfer in third. And now we got Taylor Gold, who's yet to put down a run, coming from Steamboat, Colorado, looking to find a heater of a run. This is where we're going to have to see Taylor Gold kind of step it up a little bit. He's got the double Michael check backside 1080 into a switch McTwist. And I would love to see him put that down. It's probably one of the most technical combos that we will see here today. Mega speed. Beautiful McTwist. I just love that one. Front 12, and this is going to be the setup for the double chuck. Will we see the 10, or is it just going to be the regular one? Nope, it's going to be the regular double chuck into that huge air to fakie. Much better this time, staying up on his feet. Into the 10! Oh. And almost running out of transition right there. He ran out of half pipe, Todd. He did run out of half pipe. That air to fakey was drifting so far down the wall that he kind of ran out of usable half pipe wall to get the last 1080 in. <laughs> oh, I wanted that one, Todd. I wanted it. So the McTwist Japan to start things off. So stylish. And right into that front side 1260 tail grab Jeez. drifting down the pipe. I mean, it's so perfect. He's landing on this every single time. Gets a little bit of heel wash as he tries to set his edge into this double chuck right there. Kind of zapped a little bit of speed, but it doesn't matter because he got it back together again on this air to fakie. Now you see here where he lines up to throw this next 1080. He just runs out of usable wall in the pipe. Actually, he got really, really lucky right there. But he's got one more run. We're getting closer to the finish line here. I also want to comment on the fact of how big his amplitude was for his last two hits. A lot of times you see people start out large and then they go they smaller. Yeah. And that was the exact opposite. He was going huge on his last two hits. All it takes is one, Taylor. Get back up there. Last run's coming right up. 
Yeah, we got three runs in the books. This is the final run of the Snowboard Super Pipe final here at the Dew Tour at Copper Mountain. So. All right, we're going to go down to Mary Walsh before we start this fourth and final one, and she is with Shannon Dunn. Hey, everyone. I am here with an absolute legend, the very talented Shannon Dunn Downing. Yesterday, Shannon, we saw you and Tina Basich forerun the course, and now you're here watching the men's competition. What's your overall take? You just rode the pipe now watching these guys just go crazy. It is crazy. I'm, my mind is completely blown. Um, the half pipe is no longer five feet from 1990. Um, I love watching these guys. Phen phenomenal athletes. And we notice um, a pretty special board you have with you. Can you tell us a little bit about that deck? Yeah, this is my 1994 Dolphin Pro Model, the first one for a uh, first women's pro model for Burton Snowboards. They are reissuing it uh, this year in May 2023. Whoa. We just kind of went underwater, but can you say it was reissuing in May, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm super excited with Burton Snowboards and the Dolphin graphics. Woo! That's so cool. That was a board that I wanted so badly when I was little. Well, so exciting to have you here. One of the absolute legends in this behemoth pipe that we have grown to over the last years. Uh, so thanks for watching it with us today. So stoked. Go, you guys. You're my heroes. Back to you guys, Todd and Chris. My pack is right next to my other. What a beauty of a reissue right there, Todd. Love to see that. Shannon Dunn. A legend of this sport coming from Steamboat Springs, Colorado as well. And we're heading back up for the fourth and final run. Normally three runs, but four. So uh, things are going to get interesting here for the final here at Copper. Once again, super pipe. Ayuma Hirano sitting on a 93. That's what you need to take the lead. In order to make it into the top three, you need an 87, 66 or better. Oh, oh, losing a little bit of speed there. Maybe a little binding malfunction. Yeah, we might have had a binding ankle strap pop there, Todd, is my, my theory on that. Sitting in fourth place still. Oh, and he's doing a victory lap high five in the crowd. Love to see. Look at the crowd out there. Thanks so much for coming out and supporting snowboarding, guys. Make some noise. This has been a great super pipe final yeah and it isn't over after the super pipe final we have the big air best tricks super pipe jam presented by air force you don't want to be on i-70 right now anyways probably don't get on i-70 until like 10 o'clock tonight i don't know stick around for the men's rail jam to conclude this entire event all right we're heading back to the final run for siddhartha ula here originally from great britain splits his time between venice beach and Copper here in Colorado. He's currently slapping, smashing pumpkins at the top of his run, getting amped up. For his fourth and final run, needs a 93 or better to beat Ayumo. Here he goes, drops in, get that backside air. Extension on that one sets him up here for the second hit, front 10, oh, and washes on the heels. Oh, love the beautiful toe side. Oh, oh, nice, nice lean, lean air, Todd. That was sick. That's the key to Richard's heart right there, the good lean air. It really is, and if Clavin didn't have a bunch of mustard on his lens, he probably would have yeah. a good shot right there. Amazing Make some noise for Siddhartha, picking up, some, picking up some trash in the pipe. Slap some respect on Siddhartha. Out here ripping all day. We're gonna go no replays. We're gonna head right back up to the top of the order here. Ryan Wackendorfer currently Sitting in third place with the 8766. 27 years old, right? Nope, this is Josh Bowman. Oh, we're Josh, Josh Bowman. Bowman. Nope, sorry. Sorry, uh, I got ahead of ourselves I'm here to there. Keep you honest here, Greg. Yeah, keep me on target. All right. Keep me on target. Make Brian Wackendorfer freak out a little bit. <laughs> Think he's in the wrong place. That's what we're trying to keep you guys on your toes. That'd be an interesting format for a contest. You just yell names. Yes. You're up next. Yeah. I like that. Keep him, keep him scared. Keep him guessing. That's right. Just beat him with a stick and let him fly out the start gate. You'll notice there's about 48 iPads at the top Ooh. of the course filming the run. It's a mandatory horizontal iPad filming. Yeah, it's weird though because Danny Cass is watching reruns of Narcos. He should be filming these guys, but he's actually he's just watch watching Netflix. Yeah, just watching Netflix. Yep. All right, Josh Bowman, Mammoth Lakes, California, 24 years old. He's currently 
sitting in seventh place with the 45-3-3. Known for going huge out in Mammoth Lakes, one of the few places with a half pipe these days. It's probably buried now, though. They just got like 90 feet of snow this weekend. And the snow has started to fall here at Copper. Here we right, go. And then switch for that first hit. Oh, so perfect. Switch method air to start off this run. Right into that big old double. Front nine, perfect rotation on that. Snaps into the back nine, gets it around, it around this time. Huge front dubs. Wow, that was a great run. Josh Bowman has entered the chat with that one. Really putting it down for that fourth and final run right there. And I love the amplitude on that yeah. last hit. It just, just shot out of a cannon. Came out of nowhere, landed that back nine, and this was full gas pedal into that front up 10. Yeah, I love how he squeaked that for, uh, backside nine around. But here, let's take a look at that switch method to start things off. Yeah. Great Boom. poke. Again, Clavin definitely missed the photo, but great poke. <laughs> right into that cab 1080. Gets that around, and this is all coming back from a savage one-cheek sneak on the run It was, previous. yep, the old, uh, uh, he might be wearing a diaper for run yep. number two after that cheek squeaker, so we never know. And here he goes, gets around that 900 and sets him up here for the turbo boost into the giant front dub 10. He hit the Mario Kart booster pad right there before taking off. And he celebrates with a self high five at the end, but that front nine, Back nine, giant front dub 10. Everything about that run was solid. Yeah, it was very solid. Good looking run. You had to wait till the last one to really uh, put it down. Yeah, but that's what you want to do. You want to leave the, you leave the judges with a huge air at the end. End on a high note. That's going to put Josh Bowman in fourth place with a 76-3-3. Very, very respectable showing there on that fourth and final run. We're going to head back up to the top for Ryan Wackendorfer for real this time. Uh, we're not gonna make him freak out like I did last time. <laughs> Coming from Edwards, Colorado, currently sitting in third place with the 87.66. He's got the tricks, he's got the technicality. Can he put it down for his fourth and final run? Here we go. Whoa, just building drama right now. I can feel it. Wackendorfer up and over twice on the double, straight into double front 12. Nails that landing into the double Michael Chuck. Similar run. Double 10 into, what do we got here? Does he got? Oh, and just squeaks it around. Squeaks the cab 10 around. He went bigger on everything, but a little bit of hand drag on that last hit. Keeping yeah. things exciting out there, Todd. His run number one was the cleanest that we saw. He came out swinging. I like how he grabs kind of stale fish on that or switch melon on the switch 1080. And then the front 12, like he opens up, spots that, matches transition perfectly, then into the double chuck. Mega commitment move. Here's that front 10, and he kind of almost ran out of transition as well, just like Taylor Gold. It's kind of a risky endeavor when you want to put a savage move right at the bottom of the pipe like that. You can see it just seems like it's maybe just a little bit of undervert because these riders on the last hit are just barely squeaking it in, kind of running, running out a half pipe. So he's currently in third place. He's going to try to clutch onto that spot here. Yeah, because we still haven't seen a run from Taylor Gold. So heading back up to the top to Raibu. As you can see, the snow is falling. I believe uh, snow in Japanese is Yuki. The Yuki is falling right now uh, for this Japanese rider. Raibu Katayama. Known for going massive, just such a fan of him, his style, and his attitude. Let's see what he can do for his fourth and final run here, Todd. Go in the first hit. There's that drifting melon to fakey to get things set up for this big dub. Actually, Ooh, just a 720. Seven. Maybe lost a little bit of speed on the setup. Okay, what's he gonna do now? He's like oh. hopping out. Oh, he's going, he's going big air Bob Blair on him, oh, Todd. Oh my gosh. Here we go. Hold on to your hat. Huge method. Another incredible method that Clavin definitely missed the photo for. <laughs> Just an absolutely size large uh, poke on that. That's right, Dutor. You can uh, just, you know, literally anyone else in the audience caught that, except for Clavin. Raibu is not the, he's the hero we don't deserve sometimes, you know? It's very true. 
Look at that. But look at that. Two of the biggest errors we've seen today. Unfortunately, not able to link up that run, but still, right now, sitting in second place, drifting air to Fakie. Kind of landed a little bit low, got his speed zapped out there. You saw his toe edge kind of catch. Wasn't able to do the big dub 10. You see, and he ends things off for the people. Wow. He always puts on a show. You know, there's a degree of showmanship, Todd. And I'm a fan of Raibu's yes. showmanship. Look and that was that. late, too. Like, he, he waited and waited until he hit the apex and then punched that back leg out into a perfect layback. Good fundamentals you'll see is when somebody takes off and then they wait and they have a good cadence. Oh my they gosh, he almost over aired the uh, Air Force height meter right there. Yeah, again, Clavin definitely missed that photo, <laughs> but it, somebody got it. You might get him fired before the event's <laughs> over. That's Don't do that. There's people listening to us. Oh, there are. Okay. Unfortunately. Shout out to Raibu's perm, too. Yeah. Fluff that thing up. Danny Davis about to drop next. Danny Davis coming out of Highland, Michigan. Putting on for his city. He's 34 years old, regular footer. Started snowboarding during the Great Depression. Dropping in for his backside air. Hit number one. Danny, frontside alley-oop to get this Beautiful. going. Keep him guessing, Dan. Front nine out of front oop. That is a great line into the McTwist. The crowd loves there to fake you there, Todd. You heard him. That was insane. Danny putting together a great combo up top, all the while riding a formal dinner table. Yes, that's a four by eight sheet, sheet of plywood. That is. I, I believe that's, uh, that is the table, you know, where King Arthur sat on one it end. It was, yeah. <laughs> They're churning butter. <laughs> one major shout out to Daniel Frank on that frontside alley but I haven't seen anybody drop into a frontside alley in right. a long time. Ayuma Hirano is already sitting in the lead with a 93. He's got some leisure space right now. Yeah. Sitting at a 93. He has the triple court. Does he need to break it out? I don't think so, Todd. No, I would advise no. Looking to improve on a 93, which he can do easily. But we got Taylor Gold yet to come down. If Taylor can nail the ultimate Taylor Gold run, it could give Raibu and also Ayuma a run for their money as far as that those top two spots. Here we go, snapping into that 1440. Ayuma Hirano looking perfect as well. On this right here, look how high he landed on the wall. So much speed. Back 12. Okay, he just upped it a notch here. Ayumu Hirano ending things off with a pair of 12s, two 14s to start, a pair of 12s to end it off. Given the people what they want, Ayumu Hirano going gigantic and doing big tricks with sleepy style. Got the double XL pants just looking good out there, Todd. That was insane. I think he might improve there, Todd. It looked like he put less effort into that run than my son doing dishes. Look at this right here, 1440. He's so sleepy, it off. he actually doesn't even know where he is right now. The pair of 1440s up top, and I, you know, we haven't seen the replay of this next move yet, but this is pretty rad. Slob grab, crippler, full extension. That's a great photo. Let's hope Yosh got that photo. Back 12, upping in the ante a little bit there. That was a back nine on the run previous where he popped up that high score and then straight into this clutched frontside grab, inverted 1260. Also, take a look at that Murder Hornet drone oh. chasing him. You know, don't, <laughs> extra points for not being distracted by that buzzing drone and right up in your business while you're doing a frontside 1260. Wow. Look at that right there. Ayumu Hirano coming down. Clutch performance. He already had it wrapped up, but he gave the people what they wanted and definitely made a statement with that run. He did. He actually slept walked up to the top and... Uh, He's, just, he's literally asleep while riding that run there. Dude, Ayuma, is, he's so aware of where he is on his landings on the wall. And there are no mistakes. In between the walls, perfect. As soon as he leaves the lift, he carries his grab through the entire rotation. Perfection from top to bottom. You know, he is a vert skater too, Todd, which I think, think helps. Oh, wow, look at that score coming in at 9666. Run number four for Ayumu, improving upon his third run. That's going to keep him in first place with a sizable read. Mary Walsh is going to get a word with Ayumu. 
Oh, we have a Yumu, but he's kind of in the zone right now. He, uh, we, we have Raibu. Do you want to comment on what you thought of a Yumu's run just now, by chance? That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. Ayumu, your style was on point. Both of you guys always bringing the style so much. Back to you guys. Thank you. Wow. Wise and I, incredible words from Raibu. Raibu. I want Raibu in the booth. Yeah, we got to get Raibu a headset. Let's get him in here. All, All right. right. Raibu, I couldn't agree more. That was crazy. Now the final drop for the fourth and final run from Taylor Gold. He currently hasn't put one down. Dude, he's got it, though. This, he's got a crazy run. He's kind of having his hand forced here by Ayumu to put it down. Come on. Let's go, Taylor. Right Taylor now. Gold coming out of Steamboat Springs, starting things off with a McTwist. Tweaked well above his head, straight into the front 12. Okay, will we see the double chuck 10? Gets the double straight up and over. There's that air to fakey. Hold on to it here, Taylor. Get it. There's that 1080. Taylor Gold with a full complete run. Wow, that was absolutely clutch, Todd, on his fourth and final run. He puts it down. It's like he's got ice water flowing through his veins right there. That's what we love to see. The pressure is built. Let's take a look at that run. He really showed up to work for this one, Todd. Yeah, he started things off with that big McTwist and then comboed that into the front 12. Gets that full extension, shows that he's got control over the trick, sets the style hand handbook right there, straight into the front 12 with the tail grab. Great amplitude on that. You can see he carries so far down the half pipe, top of the transition, into that double Michael Chuck. Melon to Indy, switches it up halfway through. And sets it up here with this drifting Melon fakie. And a much better result here as he grabs in between his legs with his backhand roast beef. Yeah, was that roast beef? I was going to say, I didn't yeah. notice that in his run there. He brought the beef. He brought the beef for the final hit right there. Really putting all the pressure on himself and showing up and delivering, Todd. We don't see a lot of backside beef grabs, but we saw one right here reaching in between his legs for an added degree of awkwardness on an already crazy trick, running out of wall, power layback, Taylor Gold. Let's see how the judges score this one. Here we go. That puts him into second place. Yeah, Taylor Gold moves up into second. Raibu knocked down into third. Chris Cote is going to run down there and talk to Taylor Gold. From the depths to the top, all the way to second place. You must have been feeling it on that last run. What were you telling yourself before you dropped in? I just wanted to have a good time and enjoy my last run and mainly not run out of pipe again. That was scary, that last one. I thought I was on the deck, and that's never a good feeling. Yeah, I think that was horrifying for all of us here. How do you come back after a near-death experience like that? <laughs> pop harder. That's all I was thinking going into the cap 10. I was like, I got to pop way harder, and yeah, that's all it took. All right, well, I think we'll be talking a little bit more about you in our award ceremony coming up very soon. Taylor Gold! You love to see it. It was a Cinderella story right there. <laughs> Pressure cooker going from worst to first, or I guess worst to second. Really showed up to work on that one, Todd. Yeah, he really did. I mean, putting that down with that 1080. So, wow, what an amazing event here today. Ayumo Hirano comes through with the win. Taylor Gold in a clutch performance on his fourth and final run. And Raibu Katayama, one of the fan favorites here, rounds out the top three. What a great event, Todd. Yeah, and it ain't over. It ain't over. We still have this best trick Super Pipe Jam presented by Air Force that's coming up in a little bit here. And we're going to see skiers and snowboarders coming together to do the biggest airs and the biggest tricks. Perhaps we'll see our winner, Ayumu Hirano, coming back for that event this afternoon as well. Frontside 1440, switch 1440. Look at this kid absolutely put on a demo here. You know, one of my favorite parts was Ayumu declining the post-contest interview and then Raibu just saying, that was crazy. That was a highlight for me, Todd. Yeah, that was great. Ayumu Murano, the mellow slayer of this hot pipe. That was so sick, so perfect. <laughs> it's just beautiful to see the mixture of style and progression come together. And that's when you get Ayumu Murano on the top of the podium. Just a great contest. All right, well, we're going to go down once again to Chris Snow-Tay, who's going to wrap this thing up with the award ceremony.
Oh yes, I have the amazing job of awarding our top three to hand out these beautiful trophies. Let's get a round of applause for Rob Sallet, Senior Pepsi Design Director. Yeah, Rob. No pressure, all right? After an incredible finals, in third place, let's hear it for Raibu Katayama! These writers have been flying all day long. Incredible work. Congratulations, Raibu. And again, coming from the depths all the way to the top of the podium, let's hear it for Taylor Gold! Yeah, Taylor. And you're 20, 23. Two Tour Copper Mountain Champion. Let's hear it for Ayumu Hurano! Always oh, doing it with style and with a smile on his face. Let's hear it for our top three here at Men's Super Park Finals. Wow. Crazy comp, Chris. We, what an event, Todd. We knew the heat was going to come after watching practice, but we love drama. You know, to see Taylor come back in the fourth and final run. Ayumu actually gave us some drama too, wasn't able to put it down, but finally just pedaled to the metal third gear, top of third, put it in fourth for his final run. And we had Raibu and his perm going gigantic with that frontside 1260 tail grab. And also, the winners get this beautiful Nixon mullet watch. They call it the mullet because it's beautiful in the face, but the band is all about party. Here's the watch right here. I actually have one. You want to buy it? Uh, I don't know if I want to buy it, but it looks like a great watch. Yeah, it looks like Todd. a great watch, it's right? It's a great watch. Yeah. That was a super fun comp to commentate. I mean, just any time that you get to see that much style paired with the super technical it's it's always the best and it was great because there's a lot of mixture of different runs yeah. you saw you know the double michael chucks from taylor gold you saw the giant mctwist from taylor and then you saw raibu just going huge with the beautiful front nine melon and these awesome air to fakies it didn't feel like a spin to win fest mm -hmm. it was a lot of style and amplitude meeting progression yeah and also we you know can't can't uh rule out there with danny davis dropping a crazy combo the front side of alley-oop I mean, we, we don't see that very much. Not a, like We saw a lot of tricks that don't commonly happen in like traditional pipe comps these days. All we're seeing is people just, you know, Cuisinart off the first hit, top to bottom. But we saw the style. It was insane. The audience, the participation, you guys are out there cheering these guys on. But do not go anywhere. We have the Big Air Best Trick Comp Super Pipe Jam presented by Air Force coming up next. We're going to see all these guys back in the mix with the skiers going huge, doing super technical tricks, and we're going to give out some prizes. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a little break and be right back. Sausage, eggs on the croissant roll. Amazing. Nice and fluffy, the croissant. Check it out. Imagine how much Mountain Dew is in there. We should probably drink these fast. Two, two. Copper, kind of a big deal since 1972. Here's to 50 years of the best terrain, the biggest competitions, the boldest athletes, the most fun. 
The Athletes Mountain since 1972. Get after it. Every superhero has an origin story. We all got our start somewhere. For us, it was the U.S. Air Force. <laughs> Dew Tour is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Do the Dew. Safeway. Fresh foods, local flavors. The oh, pipe is so far and, and I crazy in the pipe. I like a high air because uh, anybody who even know about snowboarding like high air. <laughs> I just think uh, if uh, I go big, I can get a big crowd. <laughs> I'm really happy when I, you know, uh, due to give me the bigger a uh, fun event. Oh, and this is a, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> Half pipes easily one of the harder things to ride in snowboarding. There is a ton of focus going on. It's the one thing in snowboarding that you can look at and you can't argue with. People going huge. These kids are are riding a lot of half pipes, and that's a rad thing. The screaming when someone does a really good air. Oh my word! Drawing that line between how can I go as big as possible and also have those tricks that I really want in there. These guys are pushing and pushing and pushing and they're, they're succeeding. The stakes are high, but these guys are pros and they all want to win. You've got to risk it all to gain it all. You have to do tricks that you are scared to death to do. Because at the end of the day, half pipe is about going big. <laughs> I think I started my relationship with Mountain Dew when I was 16 or 17 years old. It was just Danny Davis at the time, and I loved that small team vibe. They started off at such a high note with really giving back to the riders, and they've kept it that way. Red's Backyard started, and the whole point of it was I really wanted to give back, and we are able to make that dream come true. Peace Park was something cool that we got to do every year. And once we did that, it was like, let's open it to the public so everybody can enjoy visions of terrain. We've all kind of like put the ideas out there and, yes. and we've gotten to execute them pretty well. I can't go after that. When did you start your relationship with Mountain Dew? Whew, man. Do they have that on there by chance? Yeah. What, yeah, what year was it? 2008. Holy smokes. Yeah, okay, cool. I knew nothing when I got into snowboarding. All I knew is that it was fun fun for me is riding with my friends and traveling around the world with those guys. Podiums are like there as a memory. Video parts you can always look back on. The one thing that I always say with Do that's, again, just so rad is how long they've been dedicated to snowboarding and action sports. Mountain Dew really has made me become a better human and I feel so lucky that they've looked at me and took a chance with me. They have helped put snowboarding where it is. It's a good family to be a part of. Watch out, folks. <laughs> hey, everyone. We are back in the booth for Dutour Live, and I am here with two of my closest friends. We have Kelsey Boyer and Micah Anderson. Now, Micah Lee, and they um, are from Save a Brain. So can you just start us off, Kelsey, with what Save a Brain is? Yes, I can. Happy to be here. Save a Brain is a Salt Lake City-based nonprofit. We have been around for three years now, and we focus on prevention and education of traumatic brain injuries and concussions. 
That's awesome. And Micah has long worked with Kelsey. So Kelsey, you're the founder. And Micah, what's your title at Save a Brain? I'm the marketing manager. Oh, but yeah. I feel like I'm more of the back end, just getting stuff done behind the scenes. That's awesome. So um, Kelsey, you have a really personal story about how Save a Brain came to be. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Yes. Long story short, in 2016, I was competing in slope style snowboarding. I had too many head injuries in a short amount of time, about two month window. One of the falls was very aggressive and I had immediate head pain after. I went to about five doctors, all of them said I was fine. Two weeks later, I was on a film trip with Micah in Jackson Hole. I was, I guess, having mood swings, gagging, not sleeping, and Micah forced me into the emergency room after the eight hour drive back. Uh, they, they said that they were going to take a CAT scan just in case, but they thought nothing was wrong. She comes immediately back in, and my brain has been bleeding for two weeks, and it shifted 11 millimeters, and I had to go for immediate brain surgery. I think what's so wild about that story is I think we all think of concussions or uh, TBIs in a way where, you know, you have a fall and you're knocked out and it's very clear that you need to go to the hospital right then and there. But with your story, you, like you said, you had two weeks and symptoms that we may not all be aware of are associated with concussion and brain injury. Um, what was that like for you, Micah, to, as a friend to see? Yeah, I mean, oh, put me back in it. <laughs> um, and knowing that she hit her head multiple times in a short amount of time obviously is very concerning in general. So just kind of watching for red flags and kind of seeing like her say things that were out of character or not be able to sleep or at one point maybe slurring words a little bit. And I think the tip of the iceberg after that trip, like she mentioned a bunch of different symptoms is she had such bad light sensitivity that she couldn't drive her car home. And so seeing that it's kind of like, you have to be that friend that puts her foot down. Like no matter what you say, you could be fine but we need to get you checked out just to know what's going on inside, right? So oh. it's pretty surreal. I mean, we both thought and the doctor thought that she was gonna be okay and it was definitely the opposite, so. Yeah, I wanna say too, like to this day, she'll never admit it, but the doctor said that I would not have made it through the night and she literally saved my life, never wants to admit it, but <laughs> putting her on the spot. <laughs> We're really happy that you were there for that. I mean, that's amazing. It's, it's crazy to think that you could function for two weeks, but it, you'd be at that kind of time limit where one more 12-hour period and mm. things could be very different. I mean, that's just absolutely wild. And, and at that time, were you already in, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, but were you already wearing a helmet then? Uh, I wasn't the best helmet wearer. I mean, I wore it for competition as everybody does when they're required, but I was not educated about the brain. I did not wear a helmet that much, and yeah, things are totally different now. And it's wild, too, because I feel like, how many years ago was that? Uh, this March is seven years. Wow, almost, wow, yeah, that's a pretty heavy anniversary <laughs> yeah. that you turned into like an amazing positive now. But I feel like in the past seven years, especially looking at snowboarding, mm -hmm. and I know you guys also work with other action sports, but there's been so, the level of progression is, I mean, people out there in pipe, in slope, in the streets are, it's, there's a level of danger that we accept as normal within um, this community. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think, you know, the opportunity for you guys to come in and normalize helmet wearing and make that more acceptable at higher levels is really incredible. Can you talk a little bit about the process and what you guys are doing to, I mean, we know that so many people wear helmets when they're going out for the weekend, but it's a different experience when you're very high level in the sport. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think for us to, uh, you know, it's obviously wear a helmet, that's gonna be said, but be educated. Know what to do for your brain after you might hit your head because it could happen and know what to look out for in your friend's head injury or know how to like support them is the most important thing. But obviously, yeah, competing at a high level, you wanna be well protected, have a good helmet, eat a good diet, know about your brain, like be very self-aware. And that's kind of like what we're trying to focus on. And I think, I mean, we have a bunch of different programs and it takes a community to move that needle. Oh, completely. Yeah, because yeah. you guys don't just stop at it. Like you said, you kind of lead, lead into it, but it's not just the wearing of a helmet. Mm -hmm. It's so much more of the lifestyle yeah. and and everything you're putting into it because it's it's a uh, trifold, right? It's your brain health, your mental health, your emotional health, mm -hmm. uh, physical health. Yep. Maybe that's I, I, you can probably say that better than yeah. I can. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so can you talk, tell us a little bit about some of the programs that you guys have um, that you work on? Yeah. Uh, we have happy helmets. So for two years now, we've donated 2,000 helmets, which is awesome, but we donate them to nonprofits and youth programs because the barrier of entry of a expensive, high-quality helmet is 
obviously very high. So we like to support them there. Uh, we made a concussion guide that is for eight-year-olds and up to understand so little Johnny can be educated and <laughs> also give the pamphlet to his parents because maybe they aren't educated. Uh, we, oh, God. Sorry. We Blur the Brain, which Melissa, who also works with us, created with an amazing animator, which makes learning about the brain fun and digestible because sometimes it's really cut and dry and it's hard to get into. So kind of getting a little bit deeper with each episode. It's on our Instagram and our YouTube. And we also have healthy eating episodes that introduce an ingredient of the month that it's healthy for the brain. And we do recipes. We do two a month. That's awesome. I think yeah. that's a really good point, too, especially, Micah, you on the marketing side, is that, you know, in snowboarding, you both wear helmets every time you're out there. I ride with you guys a lot. You're amazing ambassadors for safety and protecting your brain. Um, but how do you bridge that gap to communicate that? Because it is like, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's a dry subject to talk about mm -hmm. our brain health. And, you know, there's so many things we don't, we always kind of, you know, we don't want to think about that maybe. Yeah. So how do you bridge that gap to really, you know, making people want to kind of make these lifestyle improvements that enable them to keep their brain safe? I was, I was going to say, what has worked for us is lead by example. You know, like, like you said, lead by example, like do the actions and take that initiative. And if you create a safe environment and a safe space, like people will want to come over there and learn together. And that's our approach with Save Your Brain. We're like, we don't need to be scared of this. It's the number one injury in the entire world. And I read a statistic that was like 70% of people that sustain a head injury will develop depression and anxiety. And that's so big. And we shouldn't have to go through that alone. You know, like, we don't need to be scared of this. Let's talk about it together. Yeah. No, see, that's incredible. Oh, yeah, Micah, what did you want to add? I was just going to say basically what she said. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, of course, uh, we have time for one more question. Uh, March is Brain Injury Awareness Month. You guys have a bunch going on in the month. Can you share a little bit about uh, what we can uh, get involved in and follow? Yeah, so March, heavy month for us. Uh, we are launching a campaign called Break the Stigma. We just want to create the conversation and break the stigma, stigma together of head injuries. So we're doing a silent auction to help fundraise, selling merch on the website. Our social media becomes a whole education platform, and we just, every day we're going to be doing stuff, giveaways, just learning together. Yeah. Each week is going to highlight a different section as That's far as awesome. what you can do for yourself and your brain. So follow along. Yeah, follow us. <laughs> That's awesome. And also, um, if you notice these cool beanies, they are Save a Brain <laughs> beanies that you can get as a donation, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we will be launching these autumn Save a Brain collab beanies in March. So we, if you're here, we're selling them at the tent. And oh. if not, March, they will be on online. Amazing. And of course, you guys are in the village. You can stop by, see the Save a Brain booth. And then next up, we have this, uh, the Air Force Big Air uh, Jam, which is going to be incredible, where everyone is wearing helmets. And you guys have helmet checked all the helmets, yeah. which is another initiative that you guys do. We have, yeah, helmet checks. Just we want everyone to be safe. At a high level out there. At a high level, both uh, theoretically and if you're going yeah. 20 feet out of literally, the pipe. Literally, like yeah. in the pipe, literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you guys are doing incredible work. I think in the last three years, you have brought so much attention to the many facets of our brain health. And I know I'm so appreciative of it appreciative of it and I have learned so much so um, I'm really excited to just continue to watch what Save a Brain does um, if you're uh, out there make sure again see, save, see the Save a Brain booth follow Save a Brain on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and thank you so much Kelsey Boyer and Micah Lee for joining us thank you. next up we have the Big Air so make sure to stop by the villa in the village the, the Dutour experience excuse me see Save a Brain and go up and check out Big Air next thank you guys thank you Pacifico is for those who create their own path. That's living life anchors up. Hey there, it's me, Food. Whenever you need me, uh, I'm ready for you. Especially when you're busy and you're always busy. But no matter what, we find time for this. So go ahead and enjoy the moment because there's plenty to go around. Keep it easy, my friends. Sincerely, food. Sincerely, Safeway. Check it out. Imagine how much Mountain Dew is in there.
only drink these fast. Two, two, two. When we started Beyond the Boundaries, our hope was just to help more women feel comfortable in the park, learn new things, and just have a really good time snowboarding. All of the women that come here immediately are part of that, and I think that really enables more learning and more fun. BT Pounds has become this big family that we've come to love, and we look forward to it every single year. For more information on Beyond the Boundaries, you can check out our Instagram, at BT Bounds, or our website, www.btbounds.com. You better hang on, because Papa John's just flipped pizza night on its head. Introducing the new crispy parm pizza. Just when you thought all that cheesy goodness couldn't get any better, we decided to put toasted Parmesan cheese where cheese never cheesed before, on the bottom. You know you can't help but flip it over and take a look. This is the crispy parm pizza, only from Papa John's. <laughs> Scan the QR code to access Do Tour Copper Mountain exclusive online only styles before they're gone forever. Copper is king right now. They take the time to make a rad park a great pipe. They're one of the few resorts that provides a 22 foot half pipe year round for us to train in, compete in. I mean, without them, we'd be struggling to find half pipes. You see tons of pros coming through here all the time, since it really is just the athlete's mountain. It's just so cool. They build stuff for the elite pros, and then geezers like myself. It's crazy that Copper is on their 50th year. I feel so lucky every day that I get to come to one of the best parks in the world. Copper Mountain is leading the charge on progressive half pipe and park riding. There's no one else that even compares. The US team partnering up with Copper Mountain is huge. Some of the camps they set up for us, that's what wins medals. Woodward's amazing. It's a good place to come train and shred. The barn is just such an incredible place for a young kid coming up. Whether do tours here or regular year, it's the best resort to be at. <laughs> All right, welcome back. We're back up there in the Super Pipe, and this is the Big Air Best Trick Super Pipe Jam presented by Air Force. I'm Todd Richards, joined by Gus Kenworthy and Chris Grenier, and we are going to be talking about giving away prizes and cash for tricks. Gus? Yeah, it's exactly that. Um, we are giving away cash. <laughs> there is, there's really no criteria for it. If we see a big slam, we could award it. Right. If we see a big trick, we could reward it. Outfit choice is even a category <laughs> here. It's perm, hairstyle, you never know. And we got ski highest air, we're giving away 2,500 bucks. Snowboard Highest Air, $2,500. We got the MVP award. We're going to be giving away $1,500. One standout award will be given for the jam, which will be determined by a judging panel. So cash will be distributed throughout the jam by the judges at the bottom of the pipe. And right there, that is the Air Force height meter, and that is what you're trying to boost above if you want to get those big air points to get yourself going home with some cash. Yeah, there's a big cash prize for the highest air of the day. I mean, that's arguably, you know, that's the best thing about doing these, these sports in the half pipe. Just trying to go big. You know, it's interesting. We got a mixed event right now. We got skiers and snowboarders together in a jam, which I can't remember the last time I've seen this. Now, who goes bigger, skiers or snowboarders? Skiers, yeah. way bigger. They do. I don't know. Not after watching that last event. I feel like, no. Okay. All right. Cool. We got two. We have two conflicting opinions. The snowboard guy is saying the skiers go bigger, and the skier is saying the snowboarders go bigger. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to see how it shakes out here. We're going to get underway in a few minutes, but this is this is kind of cool. You know, there's been, just over the years, like this weird, people, some people want to perpetuate this weird, like, skier, snowboarder animosity. And yeah, I've there's no beef. I've always been like, who gives a crap? 
there's you know? no there's there's no beef. In fact, we're we're building bridges. That's right. You're, you say that we're going bigger. I say that you guys are going bigger. It's just love. Yeah, that's right. We just we just want to see people risk their lives for our entertainment. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, Chris, you know, we just got done with this men's super pipe competition. We saw some some giant airs uh, from the likes of Raibu Katayama. I mean, who else do you have in this list here of people that you're looking at to go huge? Well, obviously, number one, Raibu is going to be going enormous. Now, is Ayumu Hirano in this? Or is I he believe out? he uh, dipped out. He's going to go enjoy his, uh, his winnings. Okay. So we have the start list here. Todd, you want to take us through? All right. Well, we've got Summer Fenton. We've got Bay Kim Matt Labau. Is that how you say his last name? Skew right there? Labau. Yeah. Labau. We have Sidula. We have Josh Bowman. Aaron Dulester. We have Sonny Alba. Connor Ladd. Patty Joe. We have Lyman Courier. Ryan Wackendorfer. Raibu Katayama. Hunter Hess. Kaun Choi. We also have Danny Davis, who's going to be in the mix, Aaron Blunk, and Taylor Gold, who just came off a second place in the Super Pipe final just about 15 minutes ago. Yeah, so not only is this a mixed event, skiers and snowboarders, but we've got men and women, boys and girls. We've got some dogs some and young cats ends. living together. <laughs> Total anarchy. <laughs> it's it's. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Well, we should probably get this thing underway because, I mean, these guys have been sitting up there getting their practice runs in. The good thing is is it's, it kind of just goes, right? There's no practice runs. We're just sending these people down the pipe, launch. So it's not going to be about trying to string as many tricks together as you can. You're just going to roll down the wall of the pipe and absolutely just point it into one hit for that big air. Yeah, one of the things I love about this event, too, is a lot of the events are so formal. You know, it's like run, run, run. Everything's so organized and this is going to be chaos this is going to be like a complete train wreck of awesomeness down yeah. the pipe for the rest of the day a and complete we train it's going to be a complete <laughs> train wreck of awesomeness we also have our judges down there with just you know pockets stuffed with cash you know not was a judge, saying that you should knock over any of the judges right now yeah you know if they just so happen to not give away all the cash they might go home with the Couple, couple thou in the in the pocket. Well, you saying you saying the judges are going to have convenient amnesia and go home with the money? You know, the thing is, if nobody shows up, the judges pocket the money. It's true, and then if they don't say anything they like, they pocket the money. Wow. All right. Well, judges are huge in this because they are the eyes and ears about where this money is going. So pressure is on them. They are also going to be kind of working out. There's there's a gray area of money too that needs to be given away besides these benchmarks in this big jam and they're going to be decided on by the judges. Is that a $50 air or like, you know, $39.99 for that one? Basic, it's on sale. Yeah. Basically, on sale the, the formula for this contest is the plan is there is no plan. True. And that's how we're going to do it. I don't know if you've been paying attention to our broadcast all day long, but we are sticking to that same formula. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And we also have Patty Party is going to happen out here, too. This 11-year-old really lit copper on fire yesterday with two performances, one in the super pipe and also over in the street style competition. So we're going to be looking for her to put on a demo here this afternoon as well. It's so great to see an 11-year-old in the contest. Then you got Danny Davis, the vet, coming in at 34 years old. So you got fun for the whole family out here today. All right, well, Chris Cote is down with our two head judges. These are the people that are going to be handing out the cash. Chris, let's hear some words. That's right. I've been creeping over into the uh, judging conversation right here. We got our head judges for both ski and snowboard. And like you guys said, men, women, and children coming down this pipe, going off. And this is where, let, let's, let's take a look at this cash right here. So we're looking at fistfuls of cash, the best judges in the business, the best skiers and snowboarders in the business, the best fans in the business. And I think the fans might actually, the, will the fans help with the d denominations of money? Certainly can hurt. Uh, what, uh, we got a question <laughs> from the booth. How are you gonna do this? How are you gonna decide between a $50 trick, $100 trick, $200 trick? We're gonna start slow and try to figure it out as we go. Start slow, figure it out as we go. That's how I snowboard, so it's perfect. This is basically the party element of Dew Tour 2023. Lots of togetherness, lots of fun, and cash. What could be better? Right? Right. 
Thanks, Chris. This is kind of the simple question. This is the mullet portion of the do tour. We had the business up front today. Now we get the party in the back, and we're going to send the. Who is Raibu talking to? Raibu's right on the phone with his agent right now. He's trying to figure out what. To yes, do I'd like to one. clear the airspace above the half pipe. <laughs> Raibu about to get nuts over here. We already saw his uh, method for the fans a little bit earlier. It was big. Yeah, I don't know much about skiing, Gus. You wanna? Who's your contender for highest air to yeah, skiing? Yeah, let's right hear now? about it. You know, I, I think Hunter Hess is gonna go pretty big. I think he's kind of like a balls to the wall type of skier. He's kind of crazy loose cannon. I could see him going really big, and I think he wants a piece of that cash. And we also have best drip. Wow. You know what that means? I'm actually un unsure what that means. I'm actually a boomer, Todd. I don't it know what means that means. You have, who's got the most swaggiest outfit? Come through dripping. Yeah, mm. come through okay. dripping. Drip, drip. Whew. Raibu is up there. Also, best time award. Who's having the best time So this is there? a timed event, or is it about having a good time? No, Chris. This is about having a good time. Okay. How, how they judge that, I, I'm not right. sure. It's time efficiency. Really? Well, apparently, we're judging, we're judging those categories. Yeah, we're oh, we category. are? Yeah. Oh. My, well, Patty Zhao may have already won that. <laughs> so. Yeah, she's <laughs> obviously the one who's at the least stress out here. <laughs> oh, to be 11 years old riding at the Dew Tour. Right. Super pipe. For what do you do like with a check from the Dew Tour at 11 years old? You can't even have a bank account. Yeah, it's true. Good thing is it's cash, Todd, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Where do you go with that? Like, we just... Straight to the candy store, $11,000. She's, she's got a piggy bank. She's been cashing away some savings from lost teeth. All right. Well, here we go. We're going to start this party right now. If you in the audience see something that you are appreciative of, please let them know. Summer Fenton's going to start us off. We're going to do this first run in order. And then this just may just dissolve into chaos. Yeah, I think the order thing should just go out the window after the first one. It should just be full-blown chaos. Mm -hmm. Just people pushing themselves over. All right, Summer Fenton from San Francisco, California, dropping in for run one here. Remember, we are looking for big airs and also just, you know, who's having the best time putting together crazy combos. And you know, sometimes it's kind of harder for these contest kids to get it out of their head that they're not trying to put together a full run down the half pipe. This is a completely different format. You know what I think is going to do well with this format is Danny Davis. Mm -hmm. Again, the super pipe high air and best trick presented by U.S. Air Force. Run one has gone down. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see different people's techniques and yeah, strategies, because that was basically a, a full contest run there. But I, I could see a few people just kind of riding down the deck and doing a big hit. Well, we already have yeah. some money being given out. What was that, a five? First, first that was a 20. That was a 20? OK. You're officially a professional snowboarder now. You just got paid. Oh my gosh. Wow, this feels amazing. Congrats. <laughs> Do it again. Get more money. The 10% rule is going to be tough at the bar tonight with that $20 earnings. All right, here we go. Once again, B. Kim is in the pipe here, getting us going with this super high, super pipe, high air, and best trick jam. So I don't want to tell you guys what to do, but just do the best trick you possibly can. Maybe not concentrate on Lincoln tricks. Oh, that was a blast. Nice. There, Todd. Blast nice method. You got the uh, murder hornet, Jason now. <laughs> Whoa! Is that what? Indirect? I saw some little hand plants. What happened in there? Back to back hand plants. I'd like to see this, Todd. She's getting crafty in there. Front side oop. She's having fun. Yep. Yeah, let's hear it. It's gonna translate into dollars. I'm just I'm just predicting it. Oh, and I was right. More money, more oh. money, that's another twenty. But more money, more problems, so that's true. So creativity and style earns dollars here. Chris, I'm stay in your lane the down there. The goes further, the more creative you are. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm doing reporter stuff, Todd. Stay in your lane, Chris. <laughs> call right. me Chris, call him Granny. All right. We're messing everybody Matt up. Matt LeBeau, we saw him in the rail jam last night. He wasn't a part of the pipe competition, I don't think. What do we got to look forward to here? OK. Big uh, double, double chuck, a top hit. 12 feet out, at least. There's an alley flat spin into a switch seven. He's kind of putting a run together. Again, though, we don't want to see a full run. We want to see a big, crazy trick. Oh, there it yes. is. Yes. There it is. The people what they want. Kick-ass uh, blaster off the first hit. Yeah, we got a name for the that last, last hit. one, Gus. What do we call that? Uh, it was like a sow cow. <laughs> I don't even really know. <laughs> Old school, but he, he got himself $10. That's what they, you know, 
I don't want to give you guys the secrets, but the audience loves backflips. Yep, they do. You try to put as many of those in one trick as you can, hey, they're going to love you for it. Siddhartha taking some speed into hit number one, dropping in off the deck, looking to blast the backside air. Ooh, what was that, Tom? Little Taipan reaching through. There's that lean air once again. Siddhartha with great grab fundamentals. Oh, and Surfer on the news right there was a little bit of a hack. Looking like Todd Richards out at the beach in SoCal. Just full whoop -ah. I gotta wonder if the snow is uh, starting to slow things down a little bit. Yeah, it probably is. So, you know, that strategy will be to just take your line further down the pipe, carry as much speed as you possibly can, and set it free. Well, speaking of going big here, Todd, we got Josh Bowman. I saw him in practice going size large. So we could see some massive airs here. Coming out of Mammoth Lakes, California, 24 years old. And that's what we want. I mean, we've seen we've seen some some runs, some tricks so far, but yeah. I feel like we haven't seen someone really sending it. Oh, oh is this Danny Davis? Is it Dan Davis? Dan just going out of order. Oh, You'd love Danny to see Davis has just jumped into the pipe. Come on, Dan. That's I, what we're talking about. That's a big method. Nice big crailed out front side air. Let the, let the judges know. I think you should be scored more for poaching, too, as well, out of, out right. of order. That's what we like to see. Oh, no grab MFM right there. Oh, don't That's, get uh, Mark greedy. Mark Montoya, so everyone knows. Look at me. Yeah. Skier in the booth. Danny doesn't, even, Danny doesn't even want his money. Was that a $10 run? All right, now we got Josh Bowman. He's donating it. Oh, he's, he's on uh, not unstrapped in mode. These guys are still trying to recover from the pipe final that just happened a few minutes ago. Oh, Ayumu's been there. Whoa. Now we're going. This is the jam. This is what we want to see. Chaos, yeah. people. Yes. Just no bib. The plan is there is no plan. I give Ayumu money just for going out of order. Yeah, no bib, no worries. Yeah. No interview. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no interview, money. no problem. I have money. That's Bowman's, for you. Bowman's going to land in the parking really lot good. on You're this one. You're worth way more than that. But keep it going. They got a lot of money over there. Ooh, how's that? Nose grab. It was a trail, Todd. Nah, it wasn't a trail, dude. Don't make me. Oh, the trick police don't make here. Me. <laughs> trick police. <laughs> trick police on the scene. Oh, I love that. He's getting surfy. Oh! There's a little lean. Grabbing the nose. Oh, you don't see that one, Todd. No, tail grab the fake on the backside wall. And a switch car. Switch dragon bag there on the backside wall. Nicely done. Love to see it. Bag drags are worth about 10 bucks in 2023, guys. The inflation, or deflation, I don't know. What's that going? A little deflate gate going on yeah, here, Todd. Yeah, deflate gate, here we go. What, who's up next here? 77, where are we? Hey guys, I don't want to alarm you, but it's snowing out here. Are you gonna be all right? Yeah. Okay. Danny Davis is gonna be fine with that 192. He's gonna be thriving. <laughs> totally. D Davis is thinking this whole pipe's gonna slide on him in a minute. All right, Aaron Derlister's dropping in. Okay. Different All drop right. in. Wow. Kind of grinding the coping there. Styly switch five. Not the amplitude we're maybe looking for. Oh, that was kind of a weird little. Yeah, that was a kind of a Justin Dory signature rotation. Trying to save some speed. Value of flat three. Switch to the right, opposite way. That's pretty sick. Air, yeah, that was a, a I, that was a sick round. That was that was smooth, styly, some unique rotations. I like yeah, the weird rotations are, are really cool to watch. I don't think they know that they're supposed to come collect money over here. Why don't you get in front of them hey. before they can leave the corral? You should linebacker tackle them. On you have out. one job, Cote, and you're blowing it. All right, I'll try harder. Okay. Nice run, Aaron. Get money, get paid. Harder. Aaron's got the drip. He's got some drip. Yeah, that was true. I'll put him in the conversation with that. All right, Summer Fenton's up next. Again? No, she. Oh, Sonny Alba, excuse me. Sonny Alba is up. Hey, Money Mary's down here now on the job, so all snowboarders and skiers will get paid. That's good. Sonny coming out of Mammoth. Or San Pedro, sorry, 16 years old. I believe Danny Cass is her coach. Some good coach. It is snowing now, if you guys haven't noticed. I believe they call this a Dumple Stiltskin. Oh, that was big. Wow. She just earned some money. 10 feet out. She did those huge tail grabs yesterday in the women's final. 10 feet, 10 inches, 10 out of 10. Nice alley -oop. Coming down here at the bottom of the pipe. 
And she got ooh. value Bandrek there, Todd. A little slidey hand action, too. Ooh, and then he's going surfer on the news with that fat toe side. You know, that was that's it. I think she I think she deserves more than that. But uh, that was a ten. Yeah. We're getting warmed up. You know, the big bills are coming out soon, right, guys? Oh yeah. Danny Davis, Danny Davis actually has his avalanche pack in, his beacon, mm -hmm. uh, ready to go with his 192. Oh, boy. Oh, someone just poached. Who's this? Oh, that's the 14-year-old. Uh, that uh, was our free runner, Alessandro. Wow. Oh, give him some money. Oh, Ooh. dragon bag. That was more. That was very impactful. Oh, I've never seen the front side version. I've never seen the front side version. <laughs> That's what we have here at Do is progression time. That's right. That's right. We're up in the ante. Thirty bucks. Tricks like that get you paid. Awesome. Good job, Mary. Money, Mary. How are you liking this so far? Well, I feel like that nickname is the exact opposite of my real life bank account. So I'm trying to live up to it. <laughs> well, today your money, Mary. <laughs> here we go. Who's in? Uh, this is Connor Ladd. Trying to carry some speed on a five. Wow, it is. It's, it's really good. Right side down. 10. Yeah, I feel like that snow is definitely slowing them down. Because he, he dropped in with some heat, and I feel like he's struggling with speed. Shout out to the wax techs out there keeping these skis dialed in. So let's just talk about the fact that you guys have two edges. Or you have four, technically. Yeah, technically four. Technically, you got four, and we got two. And is that, it's a $10 is that an advantage for you guys in the pipe? You get to hold a better edge? You're good to drop, guys. I don't know. <laughs> Great question, Vinny. That is a good question. We'll have to <laughs> confer with some scientists and get back to you. We'll get some science coming oh. at you. But we got Patty's Zhao dropping. Patty is dropping into the pipe. She's looking for some money. Here we go. Patty into the first hit. Mellow backside 540. She's thinking about unicorns and rainbows. Jeez. She's got hands in the pockets like Mark Frank Montoya right there. Here's coming down here at the bottom. It is just dumping. Oh, just doing the windshield wiper for the snow. Oh. Great technique there too as well. Keep this. Twenty dollars. Oh, what look. does twenty dollars get you at the market? Uh, pens. <laughs> candy. Uh, candy and drawing pens, I guess. Cool. Candy mm. and Jolly Ranchers. No, I think she, she said, said drawing, drawing pens. pens. Cote. Pens. Yeah. Yeah. We're just making stuff artistry. up out here then. My God. It, Let's get the crowd involved. What are you guys thinking right now? More money? We want the money to go up? No pressure, judges. Yes, I think we should do a little roll reversal. I'll call the skiing, you call the snowboarding. Yeah, okay, please. It will right. be bad, but go Covered for it. Covered in switch with a cab seven. Nice. Coming in, going right side, 900. Yep. Oh, and the little ski bobble. McGee going back to the left-hander and then doing a shifty McGonagall. Right into a crippler nose grab. That'd be more like a, is that a D spin? It's like a Michael Chuck. I would just call it a cork five. Okay. It's just kind of a cork five. Yeah. There's another 10. Oh, wow. The judges have uh, deliberated and they said the riders just need to go bigger and do better and they'll get more money. That's just the equation we're dealing with right now. Sweet, that's the judging criteria. Just be a little bit better at what you're doing. Yeah, just be better. So basically, Ribo's, Ribo is going to come air the entire half. Pipe. I hope Ribo rolls down the entire wall and does one air. So Clavin can miss the shot again. Yeah. I will say these judges want to give out big dollars right now. They want to go back into their warm igloo over there. They want to get rid of this money. All right, Ryan, I'm like nervous to call this. Um, oh yeah, this is your time to shine here, Gus. Was that a cab seven? Was that a 180 under the pipe? Yep. Yeah. Cab seven. Okay. A little fiber. This is front seven. Front seven, right? There's a cab seven. Okay, he's making it easy for me now. I'm not, I, that wasn't even anything. Oh! Got a Michael Chuck tail grab. Very nice. Giving a little slash at the end. Gus, you could, he's good. You could, you could take your job there, Todd. He's going to snatch this job right out of my hands. 20 bones, but money Mary. What's that going to buy him at the store? Absolutely <laughs> nothing. With inflation, inflation these yeah, days? Maybe a half of a beer. That's six <laughs> drops of gasoline. Yeah, exactly. Yep, you get one cupcake. Oh, Raibu's oh, taking Raibu. some heat. Here we go, Let's folks. Let's go. Oh, he's going surfy on the news. Just trying to work up some speed or lose it, whatever. Yeah, okay. there we go. Okay, okay. Now here we go. we're talking. Let's hear the chant. Raibu, 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 Raibu. Here we go. Giant backset air from Raibu Katsuyama. 
Yup, that's what we're here for. That's a bingo, Todd. That's a bingo. You can tell the snow's slowing him down, though, because he wrote down a lot of the deck, and that wasn't quite as big as he went in the contest earlier. Pay that $40, man. $40. Forty bucks. We're that pushing is up. What we're, we're talking pushing about. Up. Forty bucks. All right, all right. That's a, that's... He is going to get himself a burger at the lodge. No fries. <laughs> It's always good to wait for the tornado force snowstorm to come in for the high air contest. It usually helps. All right, so this is who I was saying I think okay. is gonna is gonna go big. I, I I think that that's the strategy. Hopefully he doesn't just do a full run. I want to see, just see go. a big big trick. Whoa, a little drag in. That was cool. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. He's getting skaty on him, doing some lip tricks. Am I calling this? Uh, I guess so. I mean, there's a big mute grab. In terms of having fun, he's he's looking like he's having some. Ooh, nice back there's nine. a court nine. Is there a front side and back side in skis? No, it's just a left and right. Do you serve? Uh, not really. I mean, I, I, I have, but it's not pretty. I just wonder, like, is, like, do you... Like, once you start doing a board sport and you ski, are you like, well, okay, well, now that's backside for me. I don't know. I don't know. All right, here we go. The winner of yesterday's women's super pipe. In regard to the front side, back side, I guess not really, because either right or left, it's still the same. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, you don't have a foot forward. So yeah, one foot's really, not. Right. Kind of like being. you've ever thought about that. Oh, though. look at that drifting cork down the wall. The murder hornet, hornet chasing. Hormet. <laughs> Murder Hormet? Murder Hormet. Oh, the FCAP method. That was sick. It's a page out of Danny Davis's book right there. Alley Ute Japan. Very nice. Collect some money. Here goes. 40 more dollars. Hey, guys, do you know, do you have a, a thought of right now of who's having the most fun? Who do you think's having the most fun so far? Todd Richards. I am having a blast. Because besides <laughs> you guys, you're not getting paid for fun. I, I can see out. Cote out here. He is covered in snow, definitely having the most fun. Me and Grandy's have a side contest going on. It's who can not pee for the whole day. Oh, Danny's dropping. Gross. <laughs> Danny Davis in the pipe. Did he change his jacket? I think maybe just zipped it up. That was fun. Danny D looking for that diaper money. There we go. Dan, roll out and give us something. And just confirming that's because he has children and not because he's in adult diapers. No, that would be me. <laughs> yeah, that would be Todd in the adult diapers. When diaper. I say it depends, I'm actually talking about the undergarments I'm wearing. <laughs> Danny there, Davis. There's a product plug. <laughs> <laughs> Frontside oh, inverse. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that was clean. When in doubt, funnel out. 20 for the frontside invert. $20 frontside invert. $20 for the frontside invert. Just got word that Raibu's got a 13.3 is the highest air we've seen so far. Uh, it may be hard to beat with all the snow coming in here. And Blunt is up next, I believe. Yep. Oh boy. Oh, boy. oh, we have a tuck. We have an aggressive tuck in safety yellow. That was a lot of effort for not a lot of payoff. Yeah, a lot of effort, not a lot of payoff. I'm gonna I've heard that, that before. You know what I mean? Good thing is, he is OSHA approved with this kit right That's here. That's right. He can the put, job site, he's all good. Yeah, he'll put your chains on your car, no problem. <laughs> he'll come out here in the pipe, throw down some mares, put your chain on your car. That was a $10 tuck, Mary. I've never seen a $10 tuck before. Now you have. Welcome to Do Tour. Got Taylor good, Gold looking for that quad Michael Chuck, hopefully, right now, Todd. There we go, Taylor Gold. He's going to roll down half of this half pipe. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Pipe doesn't start getting fast to the last quarter. Looks like there's some bumps in the transition from the new snow. I think that's what caught Aaron up and then Taylor just there, too. You know what I see a big opportunity here for is the Mikey LeBlanc ollie off the deck to yeah. the flat bottom. You know, big air a, is not only above technique. the lip. You can launch into the flats. Yes, not great for the knees or the ACL, but hey, it's worth 10 bucks. Yeah, absolutely. We got an Ayubu poaching just got one. All right, let's see. Where's he at? Uh, oh, well, that was probably cool. It's like, uh, <laughs> did Clavin film that? What happened? Yeah. 
Okay. All right, we've got our first $100 trick. What? That's right. Wow. Oh, wow, and we love to see it, too. Well, that was great because we saw well, no, a $10 trick. We would love to see it. That's what I mean. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> are you guys watching? We are now. So oh. it was a great illustration oh, wow. of a $10 trick and a $100 trick back to back. All you gave him is 100 bucks for that? You guys are cheap. Yeah, I know. What are you guys, what are you guys waiting for? I know. We, you have like 500 to get through. The judges were ready for that, you guys. And the thing is, Ayumu's not actually on the start list. No. But I think that was probably the biggest error of the day. Is he in contention for that, that top honor or, or no? I think he just dipped right into this final. Yeah, we haven't got the U.S. Air Force official height on that. No. But Summer Fenton did launch a nice pad that the judges are going to like, and an alley oop and drag drag. All right, more money to be given out right here. Since we have so much money to give away, we're going to be here till midnight by the time they get through this cash. Yeah, the rate they're giving away. Then we're going to have Midnight Mary, which is a completely different animal. Here we go. Doubles, doubles. Carrying a lot of speed. There we go. Huge backside here. Let's just have this thing erupt into complete and total chaos. Yeah, let's keep the bottom angle and just do chaos mode. Let's burn this place to the ground. <laughs> Look at this, money's Figuratively. Flying. Don't leave! VCAM about to drop in. Again, poachers are encouraged. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that from, from us, not unofficially. Allegedly, I should say, for legal purposes. <laughs> Poachers are encouraged. How fast can you three get dressed and get out here? Yeah, you don't, want, it. You don't want that. Depends, Chris. Depends. Well, the judges don't have any $1 bills, so don't oh, even do it. Oh, big Ooh. disco day. <laughs> Burn at the bottom of the pipe. There's that body carve. Nice layback. Fins out the top. Chris, you can talk to this. You're a surf turkey. Yeah, that, we call that getting checked, Todd. $20 layback right there. Oh, and they're all uh, just riding right past the cash. We're not afraid to give cash for slashes. Cash for slash. Cash for slash. Judges agree. Yep, yeah, they're nodding. Cash for slash they like foundation. Tucks, they like airs. Oh, boy. What's going on here? Maybe just trying to build some speed for a big air. Always oh, going carve technique. Oh! Double eject. Is he okay? Are you all right? <clears throat> that is worth some money. Yeah, that's now, worth a thousand dollars. That was terrifying. Give, give him a man. bunch of money. Don't be cheap. Don't be cheap on this one, guys. Give him a bunch of money. Yeah, let's get some money. We need to put some money in a leaf wow. blower and blow it at him. <laughs> I mean, wow. Let's watch the mist pump. In right full here, replay. Gets, oh, oh my god. <laughs> you guys. So we call a little minor face drag on the lip there, Todd. <laughs> oh my god, someone needs to adjust oh. their din setting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so when I said earlier, I think there's a bump in the transition, it was either that or he got shot with a t shirt cannon in that exactly. moment. Dude. That was honestly frightening. That is the first time I've ever seen anyone get tased in the middle of a run. It's the run through a wall smelling salts presented by Frontside Air right there. He's okay, hey. and he's going to get paid. I, I'm just, I'm encouraging the judges down there to pay the man well. Hey. If you Are you give, good? Are you good? Yeah, all good. You're better now. How much money? I went for it. I'll go back up and get it. Well, you got 150 bucks right there. Body surfing. Still too cheap. Dude, honestly, honestly, still cheap. Still yeah. too cheap, you guys. guys. are holding back down there, judges. You deserve more money than that. Well, they didn't see his blood he until sacrificed, he got the money. He sacrificed his body, and a surgery is going to be a lot more than $150. Yeah, tell oh. those guys to unclench. Let the money flow like the salmon of the Capistrano. Well, they <laughs> might save some money for the best slam, and that might be the best slam, hopefully. Hopefully there's no more slams. We got Siddhartha with a heavy sag going on right now, looking for that drip award. Drip award could be, wait, he might be pants down way low. This is like OG Danny Cass right here. Yes, we are getting we are getting a confirmation from the drip report right now. He is showing off that Depend sponsorship. Hitting the fat toe sack. Dude, look at this. Just airing it out. That's what we're talking about. That's what's up. All right, I want to ask you about, about your strategy in that last run. What was your strategy? I don't even know, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got paid. Was for afterwards, switched into them, forgot this was happening. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Right? I'm with you. I don't know what's going on. Oh, looks like we got a dropper. Bowman looking to land in the parking lot on this one. All 
All right, here we go. Taking some speed. We're looking to top Raibu's air. Big oh. bounce that air. We're going to have to get a reading on that one. That was nine, nine, nine right. feet seven inches, so not quite the 13-3 that we've got from Raibu. That's respectable. 10-2. We got a 10-2 on the height meter. 10-4 on that. 10-4 on the 10-2. Switch air to Fakie. Ooh, don't get greedy. <laughs> get out of there and get back up to the top so you can make some more money. Hey, backside slash is worth it. That's 30 bucks. Slash for cash. Good job. Oh, boy. Come on, guys. Support them. I'm supporting. They're trying really hard. Chris, still think the uh, face plant was a little cheap, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Fatty to flatty. Sorry about your shit. Fatty to flatty. You can hear that landing from way down here. Trying to keep that momentum up. What do you call that move? That was an alley double flat spin. Ooh. Uh, just a double flat seven landing switch. You never see anyone do a double daffy. 40 bucks. Moves. You rarely do. You rarely do. But athletes, if you're listening. <laughs> If there's any way that you can inco incorporate a double daffy into some flat spin rotation moves, I don't know. It could be worth 40 bucks. Yeah, if you guys have any trick requests, definitely let them know, and I'll reinforce them when they get down to the bottom of the pipe. Right. Trick requests Well, you've totally been completely work. ignoring us. We told you I to know. give more cash for that crash, and... Oh, we have some poachers. Oh, we got... Oh, here we go. Oh, we love to see it. Oh, we love to see it. This is going to be go. large. Ayumu is going very fast. What is he doing? Oh, Ayumu. Here we go. Wow. Air to Fakey, almost over the top of the air meters. 16, 16 feet, 5 inches. Make it rain. Make it rain. <laughs> That's what we need. You guys better Don't not make. be cheap to Ayumu on this one. This is the chaos we're looking for. Man, with the price of eggs these days, you guys need to up your ante. Cash for chaos. Ayumu. Okay, so he's in the competition. I love to see well, it. Well, he is now. Okay, great. Ayumu is the new leader in highest air. Again, it's $2,500 for highest air. Uh, Kote, what did you just give? What did, what did Ayumu just get for that? Hold on, you guys. We have a uh, Mary with a financial report. <laughs> uh, if you, uh, oh, okay. So he just received uh, 13,635 Japanese yen. That's fifty dollars if I yeah. say. Yeah. Oh, you did some, some math said. there. Thank you. She's got a phone. Oh. Yeah, You're doing conversion? Oh, Dan Davis in oh, the This is sunny. This is sunny. Uh, you might need to get your eyes checked there, Todd. You might know, need to get I... you checked into a home here or something. <laughs> yes! That's the highest air we've seen. Giant indie air. Female snowboarders today. Back to back 360s on the capital snowboard. I would just try one big air, then roll out on the deck and try to do another one. That's what I would say to do. See, I'd unzip the coat and do a nolly and just to the flat bottom. <laughs> just, just fly to the bottom. Style counts. Style gets you paid. That's $40 right there. Okay, here's the air to fakie here from Ayuma Hirano. Air to fakie. Wow. Huge Japan air to fakie. And look at that's not a slouchy frontside air that happened right behind him either. There's one thing for certain is that Mark Clavin definitely missed that photo too. Yeah. Bank on that. <laughs> that was huge. All right, we got about eleven hundred dollars left, so they want to start giving out big, big numbers for big airs like that. You guys have a trick request for this young man? Well, he's, his run's over. For the next one. Oh, for the next one. <laughs> I. D We're gonna get some slippers in the half pipe because. Oh, you missed it. Well, whatever. I'm trying to do a show here. Quit interrupting me. You're supposed to just get in. Can somebody mute Kote. You know, you're supposed to get pertinent <laughs> information from the corral. Okay, we're gonna have some slippers go through the half pipe to make it a little bit smoother and faster. Let's talk about what we've seen so far. Well, my biggest takeaway is that the uh, judges have been very cheap mm -hmm. in their giving away the, the win winnings. Yeah. Uh, but Ayumu so far going huge. Sunny's been going huge. Yeah, so far he's got the, the top spot. 
16 feet 5 inches, was 16 it? 16 feet 5 inches. In who, these conditions, that's impressive. Who was the uh, double eject face drag off the takeoff? I really, <laughs> I, I was a fan of that move on the skis. That was gnarly because he fully just face plowed up. I think the it was Aaron Durlester. I'm not 100% sure. I don't want to, I don't want to misidentify the crash, but mm -hmm. I, I do think he deserved <laughs> more than I, he received. Yes. Yeah, the compression got him, the, the snow bumps got him. Yes. This is what's been going down. We've been handing out cash for tricks. We've got a little sizzle reel here, Todd. That's what they call that. Then Patty Zao will be up into the half pipe. Next, there's Raibu kicking out his tail for that lovely method air. And he was in the run for highest air until this little sucker came through, Ayuma Hirano. And Chris, I, Kose, I know you're, you're muted, thankfully. But I just want to say, if anybody is asking for suggestions, we want to see amplitude. So if you, if you see Hunter Hess, if you see the skiers, tell them I said I want them to ski the entire way down the deck and just give me something big, a big flat five, a big cork five. Take that top spot. All right, we're back at the top with Patty Zhao, 11 years old. The good thing about Patty and Todd is they have the same maturity level. That's right. So that's the also, one thing they have in common. Same diet, most yeah. likely. It's true. Looking to go size large. Here we go. Chris had brought up a, a new uh, theory for a contest. It's you have to jump your age as you get older. Mm. So Patty, she needs to go about 11 feet out. Unfortunately, I got to go about 53 out. So I yeah. don't really <laughs> think that we're going to be seeing that here. Danny Anytime Davis, soon. 34 feet. We're going to need to see. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Patty. Are you going to roll down the deck? and give us some action here at the bottom of the pipe. She is going to. She wants the money. She wants the chicken tendies, the Jolly Ranchers, and the drawing pens. When I was that age, my food consisted of anything beige. I was a very beige <laughs> consumer. The French fries, chicken nuggets. Yeah. They called them Todd Tenders as a kid. That's right. That's what they called them when growing up. Spaghetti, no sauce. You know. Hey, there's, yeah! There's lots happening down here put at the a bottom mic, of the Put pipe. a mic in Patty's. Give, give Patty a mic. She always knows what to say. Yeah. That's Patty, you just got another $20. And guess who was following you? Danny Cass was right there hyping you up. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. You're the best. Danny just got $20 for that slide. You just did a $20 pipe slide. Congratulations. Thank my money! <laughs> Somebody pay this guy. We have legends of the sport down at the bottom. Danny Cass. I love you, Todd! Hi, Danny. How are you, buddy? Oh, Chris Kenny and Gus are in there, too, but you don't have to. I love Todd more! <laughs> <laughs> some big action down here at the bottom of the pipe. Are we going to hand out some dollars? Apparently not. Do we trust Danny with some dollars? I think so. I mean, Lyman gave us a styly nine, but I actually just want to hear more from Patty. Yeah. If we, we could have a longer form interview. Amazing. Everybody's riding so good. That Moo Moo Air to Fakey was a thing of beauty. Hey, where's your silver medals? Where do you keep those? Do you have them on you right now? Is the silver medal in, in, underneath this hoodie? How do you think I got to the top of the pipe? Oh! It's right here. <laughs> he doesn't have a season's pass. He just drips his medal. Oh, my oh, gosh. Wackendorfer with the front invert right Frontal there. Frontal on the first hit. Give him some loot. Wackendorfer just whacking front inverts out there. Oh, he's coming out, he's gonna oh, go. Boy. Oh, he pointed, he pointed, ladies and gentlemen. Seven or eight speed checks right there. That's gonna definitely bounce. Oh! Tail grab, off axis, Michael Chuck. That was clean and stylish. And a Wackendorfer's signature move, the Michael Chuck tail grab. I like that. There's some money, there's some money. Oh, come on, okay. Raibu. Raibu, send it. Air traffic control. Do we have clearance for launch? We have Raibu on course. Raibu's on course. Beautiful yellow jacket. I can back that. Don't stop right there. That's not how you get huge airs. Oh, he's checking he's it out. He's going to ride that whole deck. He's, he's, he's got some welding goggles on right now. Look really good for visibility. I think he's checking the wind. He's kind of getting some power shots. Oh, boy. Don't flirt with the front side 50-50. Kabooya! Wow. 16 feet, 11 inches. Savage front side layback. That's taking top spot, isn't it? I believe it is. Yeah. Is that taking top spot? Can we get an official rule? Are you made of an 18? I can't remember. No, it was 16-something. 16 16, okay. But I feel like you can't go more than 16-11. It's true. You got a yeah. new meter. Here we go. Watch this backside air. And watch for the late punch out into the method tweak. 
boom, locks out. The world goes by slower when you're locked into a method that high. And that layback straight after it. Looking for that super pipe high air presented by U.S. Air Force. Look at that, U.S. Air Force height meter. I mean, he, he's at the top of the meter. If they go any higher, I don't know how they're going to measure it. He'd be knocking spy weather balloons out of the air with a backside air that big. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's an Air Bud Golden Retriever <laughs> tribute right there, Todd. <laughs> What are you, you give him 20 for that? These guys are just, I don't know what's going on with their increments, but yeah. No, he got 60 or something. He got 60 right, bucks, but then no, there's the old, a, like. He got 140. But still. Yeah, the ski judges kicked in. He's in the, the running, the, though. The, for, the ski judges kicked in some dollars with the snow judges. See, All right, here's teamwork. Hunter Hess. I know he can't hear me, but Hunter, we don't want to see a run. We just want to see something big. Once again, if you're just joining us and wondering what the heck is going on. I'm joined here in the booth by Gus Kenworthy and Chris Grenier, and we are trying to get people to fly dangerously high above a snow-covered half-pipe. Yes! Like that? Yeah, just like that. 13 feet, 11 inches. That was the highest we've That's seen from the skiers yeah. so far today. Pay this man. $100. <laughs> hey, you cracked the code. All you got to do is go super high, and you're going to make a lot of money. Perfect. That's normally how it goes. Chris, tell Hunter Gus says go bigger. Gus says go bigger, though. <laughs> no pressure. He's only like the goat. So Gus says go big, you go big. I mean, that was big. That was huge. That I was do got to say, though, snowboarders going bigger yeah, than skiers. Well, you know, What's going it, on I'll tell you what, though, because the way the method was named is that the way when you kick the board up above your head, it's the method to make your air look bigger. That's a fun fact, Tom. It is a fun fact, and it's kind of what Raibu did. He kicked that board above his head. It's like... But usually they measure the lowest point of your body, not the highest point of your board. So I don't know. I don't know if they're factoring that stuff in there. That's a good point, Todd. Trick police is here to keep you all yes, on point. Is. I thought it was invented by John Method. That's what Mary just told me. Uh, who, who's on this line? Is that? Can we get that guy off this? Here so we go. There is a highest air for skiers and a highest air for snowboarders, right? That's right. Yep. Yes. I believe so. So right now it's Hunter and we got Ayumu. We also do have an MVP award for $1,500 to give away. So there's one standout award we'll be giving for the gym. Yeah. That was a huge frontside air. Looking to crack the code on the huge airs. Another quick 50 right there. Money Mary, chasing her down. So so far, Sunny Alba's been looking like she's been going the biggest for the women out there so far. Yeah, she's got that tail grab that she was using yesterday to do well in the women's super pipe. Here we go, Danny Davis, Abby Pack is on. He's got his probe, his shovel. Danny, you're good to go. Each time we see him, he's got more on. Oh. Danny's he's gonna actually stop halfway down and dig an avalanche pit in yeah. the wall, I heard. This thing is gonna test slide. the snowpack. Yeah, he's got an ice axe in there. Uh, he's got some chalk and some ropes. Look at him, extreme, taking the extreme on this thing. Yeah. Craig Killey, be the ball. That's what they say. Whoa, there we go. Danny Davis powering that board he stole out of the bar last night. Was, yeah. People were doing shot. That was like a shot board. There was like 19 shot glasses on that thing. He just ripped it off the wall. Yep. Decided to ride it. Oh, we missed that. We, oh, it was we missed the Ayubu air. Oh, we had Sounds like somebody went large. There's money flying around. Again, Danny's been snowboarding since uh, before electricity was invented. The Great Depression. How much you get there, Dan? Hey, guys, one more run each. We're going one more okay. run each. That means there's a big wad of cash that's about to be given out right now. Here we go. Caltrans, about to change your chains. All right, and that high visibility orange that's OSHA approved. Oh. Oof! Oh, my skis up here. Gus, look trying to speed. generate some speed. Oh! oh. Zamboni like out there. I like that. Yeah. That's a big old board slide is what we call that in snowboard. I don't know what that's called in skiing. You know what? We'll call it a board slide. Big Come old back. boardy. <laughs> I'm going to call it edge roulette. That is. If your edges are too mm -hmm. sharp, you're going to get double ejected into the fence right there. Yep. Yeah, high that was speed. high risk and was it high reward? What did he get for that? 
It's never high reward with these judges. It's uh, low, low cash. Straight out of low cash. You're good, man. Here we go, Taylor Gold coming in for his last run through here. You know, you don't see a lot of nollies in the half pipe on the backside wall or anything. You ever notice that, Todd? I do, because you end up in the middle of the half pipe. Oh, look that at that twist. Now roll out. Yeah, now you got the technique, Taylor. Here we go, point it. Giving the people what they want. It's not big enough unless you're terrified. Ha, how's that? Big indie air tailbone. That's even approved by the trick police, Todd Richards. That's right. That's a hundred dollars right there. Oh, all right. Thank you. Wow. What'd you give it to him in ones? Where are you spending the hundred dollars? Uh, Walmart. Walmart. What are you getting? I'm gonna get some workout equipment. Workout equipment. Let's do it. Yeah. Shake weights for everybody. Here we go. <laughs> nice backside air. Full extension. These are going to be our last runs through here to get some cash. Good. Summer's got great grabs, Todd. Yeah, and just to be clear, we're going to be giving away the U.S. Air Force highest air <laughs> for ski. That's going to be $2,500. And for snowboard as well, $2,500. As well as the MVP award for $1,500. I believe we got a couple other ones. Uh, the Drip Award, Todd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an outfit award potentially. That's outfit award. <laughs> wow. right. Who's having the most fun? That's right. I think that you know that Patty's got that wrapped up just yeah, before Patty's she even got dropped in the into bag. the pipe. Um, but I will say, this is these are my takes for the drip award. We have uh, we have the safety orange, and we also have uh, pants below the knees. Siddhartha. Yeah. Yep. That's just my opinion. I'm not a judge though. We're currently holding down the top spots for the biggest air. We have Ayumu. Or no, actually, uh, Raibu. Raibu took it back. 16 feet, 11 inches on the snowboard side of things. And Hunter Hess on the ski side of things going 13 feet, 3 inches, I think it was. And we also have quality face snow plow mm. that happened as well. It's Maybe on honorable mention. Yeah. 13 11 for Hunter Hess. Oh, there it is, the face scrape. I love a little minor face drag, Todd. Yeah, it's good. It's that, that fleece looks great. Uh, and it was Matt LeBeau. I misidentified him earlier. Oh, boy, here we go. Double duty. Get some speed. What we got? Yeah, there's a lot of snow in this flat bottom. Hopping out early, maybe he's going to hike up and try and get the one hit there. I don't know what's happening here. Oh, 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 we have a doubles routine. We have a doubles routine. Whoa, the up and over doubles. We got Danny Davis in the pipe. We might see a front invert on that thing. Danny Davis dropped the pack. Apparently the conditions have stabilized. Yeah, Dan oh yeah, oh, Ayumu hey, poaching. Oh my gosh. Oh, we need Ayumu cam. Where Clear is the airspace. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There's lots of money flying around right now. There's lots of Japanese kids flying around right now. <laughs> there's money, there's blood. There's smiles, there's drip. You guys gonna give him $4 for that? Yeah, what? what'd you give him? Did you ask him for some of the cents? other money back? How big was that air? We need an official reading. It was massive. It looked Todd. absolutely massive. Yeah, it was huge. It went above the air meter. On an air, oh my gosh. The style is impeccable. And also, I just gotta add it. It wasn't just a regular air. It was an air to fakie. It's yeah. even gnarlier. Oh, it looks Wait. like we missed the Raibu air. That's uh, a little disappointing. Can we get a re re replay on that? We need to get a replay on the height. Yeah, I want a reading on uh, Ayumu's height. A lot of these riders are just doing it for fun now. They don't even want their money. <laughs> Again, this is a complete gong show. Yes. That's what you know you signed up for. <laughs> we wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, here we go with Raibu. I saw Raibu. He wants more. He went back up to the top. That is a huge tail grab. That was massive. Wow. Look at the poke. I don't, I don't know if it was quite as big as Ayumu's, though. Ayumu went above the air meter. Yeah. But that is huge. ridiculous for having a bunch of snow in the flat bottom. 
Yeah, Ayumu's got it. Yeah, that's actually insane. And that's with snow conditions that are very slow. Oh. Imagine a perfect half pipe. Look how big that is. We can't even get a reading. He went above the air meter. The good thing is that screenshot that they just showed us is much better than Mark Clavin's yeah, photo. Yeah, that's right. So we can bank on that. 18 feet 9 inches for Ayumu, so easily... The biggest air. Easy. It's going to be tough to beat. As Raibu said after the competition, that was crazy. <laughs> A t -shirt. Hey, I got a, a special report from down at the pipe. So the skiers are actually donating now to the snowboard fund. Oh, really? Because wow. They're hyped with what the snowboarders are doing right now. Siddhartha's got an Osiris G bag, I think, on right now from 2003. It's like a Chad Muska speaker backpack. That's right. Exactly. Getting surfy out there. Kicking it out. It is absolutely dumping out there right now. He's actually carrying his lens in his hand, which is a bold strategy for vision. Yeah. He's dragging bag on that toe side. He's looking for that drip award. He had it before. He was mad sagging. He's adding accessories to every run, so. Just accessorize by carrying a lens with you. You know? It's good, yeah. Good You're good. So we're getting down to the very end here. But we got a, a couple hundred bucks left. Okay. A couple hundred bucks left. Josh Bowman coming in. Last attempt here to bring home some cash. We had a couple hundred dollars down there at the bottom. Harry just pocketed a 20. Don't tell anyone. Oh, that was huge. Late blast right there from Bowman. Yeah! 13 feet 2 inches. Can you imagine how big these guys would be going if, if, if there wasn't a ton of snow? The U.S. Air Force height meter says 13 feet. And the U.S. Air Force height meter doesn't lie. It does not lie. It's very scientific how they get the numbers. Mm -hmm. Someone's carrying it's speed. Who's this? I think there's an algorithm or something. This is uh, Alessandro. Switch back 10. Yeah, Mello switch back 10. Go, 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 go. 14 years old. He needs to go at least 14 feet out. Wow. I'll tell you what, he should have been in the first, the original contest. I, th I think so too. I think so too. He wants more money. Nicely done. $60 to a 14 year old is like $150 to a 30 year old. <laughs> that's good. That is good. Thank you. That's solid math. That's, that's science, really. Can't argue science. Google it. All right, here we go. Someone yelled all the way down the deck. That's what I'm saying. Me too. Here we go. I want him to send it to I-70. Whoa! Putting the combos together. Always going surfy style, back to back. You don't see a lot of that. Double hit on the backside wall. That could be a new flavor. The bottom turn. Yeah, the bottom turn, straight back up. Looking like Rob Machado out there. There you go. That's a that's probably the most uh, anyone's ever been paid for a bottom turn. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Sonny Alba in the pipe here for her last attempt. Coach Benny is telling her just to go straight down the wall until the last seven inches of the half pipe and just send it over the fence into the audience. Someone will catch you, no problem. Here she goes. Huge. She's already gone giant. She's hauling oats, Doc. She is hauling the oats. Big old in the air. Nine feet, 11 inches on the Air Force height meter. Yo! Pumping it up. It's the biggest air that we've seen so far on the women's side of things. Oh, boy. Oh, here we He's go. Back in. Raibu. The, the perm don't lie. He had the top spot. Oh, it was taken oh from boy. him oh by boy. this guy. Ayumu. No regard for safety right now with the amount of speed he's taking. Absolutely not. Here we go. Make some noise. Let him know. Oh! How did he survive? He just fell out of an airplane. Base jumping Ayumu Hirano. And a sliding front side invert, but no, go back up because Raibu Katayama is going to come down right now. 22 feet. Wow. 
22 feet, no grab, MFM. Here we stop. go. Rye Boo, let's go. Come on, Clavin, don't blow this shot. <laughs> let's go, Rye Boo. Let's go. Kicking that way out. 14 feet, 11, I think that's conservative. Yeah, I, I don't know the science behind this. All I know is that Ayumu just did the scariest no-grab flounder to fakie I've ever seen in my life. But he still kept it chill. He went bigger. He did another trick after it. Yeah. He went bigger in one air than all my airs combined over the last four years. <laughs> the official number on Ayumu's air to fakie was 22 feet 8 inches. And the Air Force height meter don't li Oh, my God. <laughs> It's unreal. It's, also, it's puking snow right now. It really is. He actually has no idea where he is in the air right there. Look at him. He's rolling the windows down. He's rolling them up. Dude's flying like a condor right here. <laughs> <laughs> that is huge. That is also better than Mark Clavin's photo. Uh, I know they said it was the last run, but I want to see him go up and, and get another one because it was the highest air, but I want to see that, that styly grab. Wow. That was huge. Thank you, Ayumu. Thank you, Raibu, for Subarashi. putting on a show. That was so sick. Arigato, my friends. Arigato. Arigato. <laughs> Arigato. <laughs> oh, oh, stick with it. Stick with it. You got shin oh. splints, Gus? After watching that, I did. Yeah, okay. Second, <laughs> secondhand shin splints. <laughs> Ten feet, two inches on the Air Force height meter. I don't really think anyone's going to come in here and, and step to Ayumu. Betty Zhao. Oh, an 11-year-old on course. Front runner for the Having the Best Time Award. Same maturity level as Todd Richards. Oh, you know what she needs course. to do is Ayumu needs to carry her, carry her on his back and sandbag into the hit. A mm -hmm. little bit of extra weight. Do that air with her on his shoulders. Yes, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, here we go, Patty. Set it up. Let's hear it for 11 years old. Giant front 720. Chris Cote, I want to hear from her. Yeah, let's, we need to hear, we need to hear some words of wisdom. What are the words to live by from Patty? Whoa, what's your cash total at now? Uh, I got, uh, you got a lot of money though. What are you gonna do with it? Um, I need a buy. I'm gonna buy my coach some tequila. <laughs> <laughs> she is the people's champ. Patty's out. Just won this contest. There you go. Thank you. Oh, yeah, there you go. You are now hosting the Dew Tour. Yay! Yay! Exactly. Unbelievable. The hero we don't deserve. She's Patty Zhao. She's the people's champ. She really is the people's champ. Yeah, there's nothing she can't do. Broadcast. Overall winner, for sure. Except for buy her coach some tequila. Yeah, she's going to need assistance. <laughs> yeah, she's going to need fake a ID, really good old. fake ID. Yep. McLovin style. Yeah. We borrow. Ooh, okay. We what happened there? I hope your, your pit zips were zipped up. Yep, there you go. See? And check the pit zips. Check the pit zips. Oh boy, oh boy. When you stop on the deck, you can't just high five. You gotta give us something. I don't think he's going to. He's at the bottom of the pipe. Oh, there's still time. There's still room. That's just crowd work. Just That's push, crowd work. Just push Kote over for a 20. If you guys are watching this event and you have no clue what's going on, yes, guess what? Me neither. Yes, you know, <laughs> you know okay. more than we do. Ryan Wackendorfer for his last attempt here. In the super pipe, high air and best trick jam, brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Ooh, I love that frontal. I heard Full that binding extension. squeak on that one, Todd. That was nice. Looking like Lonnie Sandoval out there. Okay, oh, there we go. Out. There we go. So going Mikey LeBlanc to flat? What are we talking here, Todd? Oh, no, there's a lot of going on. The Michael Chuck tail grab. I do like that. It's very, very stylish. You know, if that one goes wrong, Todd, it goes really wrong. You hook your toe edge on the way in, it's lights out. Who we got? I don't know, but if you guys are out there competing, we have the awards coming up right after. 
So stick around, we're going to be giving away for the official highest air, the official best time, the official drip awards. There's still money to be given out. Hunter Hess will be dropping into the pipe here. Mary's still just chasing people with money. Yeah, and Hunter's currently the uh, title holder for the highest air on the ski side of things. Mary's like a reverse collection agency. <laughs> She just chases you around at the bottom of the pipe and tries to give you money. Okay, what do we got oh, here, Gus? Here we go. Something big. Something big. 14 feet, 5 inches. That's an improvement. 14 footer to shin split right there. That's right. Is that the highest Get your air money. That's Early. the highest air we've seen from the ski side of things. 14.5. That's exciting. <laughs> That's huge. It was big. 14 feet, 5 inches on that bad Larry from Hunter Hess. Big old mute grab. I told him to go bigger. He did it. So there you go. Thank you, Hunter. It's a go big or go home scenario. If you don't go big, just Go yeah, <laughs> and also if you do go big, uh, you can go home. Feel yeah, free go to go home, home afterward. Yeah. Count Joy about to drop right now. Our winner from yesterday's women's super pipe comp. The future of women's half pipe snowboarding at the top. She about to go on a 10 year run of domination. She did a switchback nine in a run yesterday, a backside nine. Switchback nine is a crazy trick. That is a crazy trick. Here we go, trying to go as big as she possibly can. Oh, wow, she's got the, the Raibu tuck she's going. She's rolling to Frisco. Giant lean air. Backside melon right there. Just cruising. Yes, huge frontside air. That was a great run. Nice and stylish. All right, Aaron Blunt will be the last one through. To get some money. He's in contention for that drip award. He's got the high visibility, OSHA approved. And the job site, he will be all good. Oh, we want some speed here, folks. Here we go. Traffic cone drip. Come on, Aaron. Give us a big air. Bigger. <laughs> Gus says go bigger. Go bigger. Come on, Gus. Oh, 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 Can you keep oh, it going? Oh. He's holding X, he's holding X. Keep pushing X, keep pushing X. You can combo this. Wow. Tony Hawk, pro skater, on the, the coping of the half pipe there. I like that. Give him some money. Special meter up. That might be the longest board slide I've ever seen. Yeah. All right, well, that wraps up our competition here. Was that a contest? I don't even know what happened. Yeah, I blacked out, Todd. I'm actually not sure where we are right now. Look at this. Deck side slip forever. Yeah, that was fire. Holding on to it, holding on to it, holding on to it. All the while, twice the edges to catch and throw himself into an aggressive ragdoll into the crowd and makes it. Yeah, the high speed board slide right there. That was beautiful. I was wondering what he was carrying all that speed for, and that's what it was. All right. That was super fun. You know, it, the best big air, best trick, super pipe jam presented by the U.S. Air Force. That was fun. I think that's like, you know, kind of the opposite of all of these really high pressure contest situations where we can really you see these giant airs happen and people can just have fun out there and show kind of what is the backbone to all these sports absolutely and i mean i'm so grateful for that u.s air force height meter because we really got to get a measurement on some of those huge airs which was exciting ayumu going 22 plus feet out of the half pipe in not great condition no, bad visibility snow in the flat bottom and just going huge so it was awesome so what is the ticket to doing huge errors, Chris. What's your takeaway from uh, this? Wrong guy to ask, Todd. Uh, more, more of a real guy, but I, I'd, I'd imagine that you uh, you want some good edges, you want a good wax job, and you want to go fast and not dump speed. All right. Well, speed checks always bounce. We're going to send it down to Mary Walsh and Chris Cote with our winners. Hey, thank you, guys. That was awesome, Mary. What were your thoughts on that one? 
I am impressed. Uh, riding half pipe in that much of a blizzard right now, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. Amazing. Well, always impressive. We do have our presenters from the U.S. Air Force, the High Air Awards, Master Sergeant Emmanuel Gonzalez and Technical Sergeant Ryan Kennedy. Let's hear it. These heroes right here. And our presenters for Nixon Best Drip and Nixon Time, Skylar Wilder from Nixon. Honestly, that camo is best drip. Okay, here we go. Yeah, Mary, you grab that. All right. You want to go that way? All right, Mary's making decisions here. Okay, your winter, your winner, highest ski air, Hunter Hess, 14.5 feet. Hunter. All right, Air Force high air winner, 22.8 feet. Are you And Ayumu, guess what? You are also our MVP. Let's hear it for Ayumu. MVP, MVP. All right, so we're going to get our photo ops here. Now, Mary, it's really time to decide the exclusive awards. Best drip. So from the booth, from the booth, best drip. Who you guys got? You know what? We're giving the best drip award to Aaron Blunk. He came through in the high fluorescent orange and did that board slide, grind, whatever you want to call it on the coping for about 1,000 feet, and we're going to give him the drip. Come Yo. through dripping. Skyler Wilder from Nixon giving that best drip award. Look at this drippy man. And Grandies, who do we got for best time out here today? I think it was a really I easy one. I think it's one. an yeah, obvious. It comes no surprise. We got to give it to Patty. Everybody knows that. Give it up for Patty, everybody's favorite. The Patty Party! She's getting the cash prize, and she is going to be Come buying up shots here, Patty. for her coach. So you had the best time out of anybody. You had the most fun. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm very happy, and this is just super fun competition. Thank you. Happy and fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that wraps up probably one of the most fun, chaotic, great time, good vibe contest we've ever seen here at Dew Tour. Congratulations to all of our winners. Let's take a look at some of our highlights. This is how it went down. We had some huge airs, Patty putting on a show, and then we had the Raibu and Ayumu show going down in the half pipe, and that was insane. We had guest appearances by silver medalists from the Olympics. Grandies, what, you, what was your big highlight, your big takeaway? And Raibu just going huge. You know, this contest to me was a lot like running into a wall. You're not sure what happened, but you're glad it did. You know what I mean, Todd? <laughs> I don't know what you do for a good time, but that sounds horrible. Gus, what is your takeaway from this competition? Honestly, I, I'm i obsessed with Patty. She's so funny. I, like, I want to have children now. Yeah. <laughs> Inspiring millions to have children. Ayumu, she's just so cool. I, I need an 11 year old buying me shots of tequila. <laughs> yes. Bold strategy. Not in this country, that's not going to happen. But no. you can imagine we had giant board slides down the pipe in dripping orange outerwear. We had incredible facial snow plows going up the wall. That was the biggest air right there for the skiers with Hunter Hess. Yeah. That That was a great time. I mean, it's that's just part of the good times here at uh, Dew Tour. So the day is not over, though. At 5 o'clock, we have the women's ski street style that is going down. And immediately following that, we have the men's snowboard street style on the course just over yonder. The snow is coming down, making it soft for these guys. You guys going to stick around for this? Well, you have to. You guys are getting uh, We're, to we're working. We're working. Yeah, we're going to be here. But it was a fun event last night, and this was a super fun event today. I feel like it speaks to the kind of vibe that skiing and snowboarding has, where it's just a good time. Everyone's having fun with their friends, doing cool things, giving each other props. So it was fun to watch that. I'm excited for street style. All right, Grandies, you and I are going to be here breaking down the men's street style. We will see you guys in a little while. Gus, thanks for hanging. Yeah, thank you. All right, we'll see you sure. guys in a couple hours for women's street style ski over on the course.
We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Check it out. Imagine how much Mountain Dew is in there. We should probably drink these fast. Two, two. Hey, it's me, food. I'm so much more than just what we eat. I'm hand cut, fresh and frosted. Aw, I love you too. See, life is always something new. All messy, frantic, and amazing. And from where I sit, you look delicious. That's why every day is worth celebrating. If you can. Stay fresh. Sincerely, food. Sincerely, Safeway.